Hello there, mortals. I'm Jensen. Welcome back to Hydraneer. In this episode, we are going to be trying to polish off Ice Helm, just down here. We kind of left it in an absolute sorry state. Are they going the right way? Hard to tell. Really hard to tell. Quick PSA, reminder, Delta Traveler has Earthbound spoilers. I'm probably not going to play Earthbound um, in the next, like, five years or so, so um, I'm not actually too worried about spoilers. To be quite honest there, Scott, in fact, it might actually stimulate me to play Earthbound, because uh, I haven't quite, you know, thought about it whatsoever. So we were going to do something rather tricky with this, weren't we? We were, we were going to do a, a little bit of black magic to kind of, like, pipe this in, weren't we? So we've got four machines over here, and we don't want to turn that on just yet, because they'll all start spewing crap out into the grinder, which is already congested. About as congested as I was last week. I think that maybe we want to get a straight... I'm going to get straight into it, by the way. I think we get a straight pipe. We kind of pipe in one more lift above, and then we elbow in from above. Like, if we take this here, uh, we could probably take this and throw it in like that. And then we have a pipe into the other machines over there. But then when we turn the machines off, the grind is going to stop, which means things will still be on the conveyor belt. Maybe we just have this machine perpetually on. Okay, we're probably going to have to pipe this in uh, uh, some different way, right? I'm sorry? Oh, it's okay, Red Rux. Everybody knows that you cancelled Half-Life 3, but you don't need to keep apologising for it. Just be based. So if we kind of, like, pipe everything in here, that would be significantly more convenient in just about every single way. Like, we could probably have the sorting system continuously working over in front of the grinder on this one single piping system, but maybe we want to have the grinder attached to all of the rest of the machinery. And then also these here conveyor belts. Probably going to be the best bet, honestly. Okay, I'm going to do that. So we'll see just where all of these link up to. We probably want to unpipe from here. And then we want to take this one. Take it off. We probably need the construction hammer as well. We want to put a straight on here and we want to put a cork in the end of it, don't we? Where's our pipe cart? Do we move it? I think we may have moved it. Let me go looking for it. Hello, pipe cart. Where you at? Where the hell is it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, wonderful. Let's go here, grab this, and we'll move it closer to the work area. So the reason I am kind of like chopping and changing everything is because we didn't do anything very efficiently last time. Let's go ahead and just whack this there. We're also probably going to want to cork that in because that's really annoying to listen to. So let's go ahead and try and find a cork. We should have one, right? I think it's, I think it was left inside of this little, there it is. Good. Excellent. Hi, Yonson. Hello there, Spray Paints. I hope you're doing great today. I'm doing fantastic. I've had a great day so far. I didn't sleep very well, um, but I did get to spend a little bit of time this morning with Yonset, which is always absolutely fantastic in my books. Let's go ahead and plug this little doohickey in. We go like that so it doesn't make any annoying noise and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take out this elbow and i'm going to straight pipe in from a t-junction right here actually do we need a t-junction do we need a t-junction i was going to pipe this above and then have it leading into there but we also want this conveyor belt to stop whenever we turn it off too okay that is to get off there that probably doesn't need to be a T-junction either. I just woke up, but I mean the day has been pretty good. Excellent. Do you live in New Zealand? It just out of curiosity, because we had a we had a storm down here in southern uh, Dunedin, southern New Zealand today. All right, let's get this T-junction off of here. I'm just going to replace that with another straight. And we need the construction hammer, don't we? Because we have a couple of conveyor belts that are just now stuck on the pipes. Let's go and grab that. We'll go and grab that now. I'm parkouring. Not very well, though. No, I don't. Uh, that's lucky. That's really lucky. The weather here is revolting. Famously so. Where's the construction hammer? We must have left it somewhere. Surely we must have left it somewhere. Over here, maybe? It's got to be over here. I think we've done something silly with the construction hammer. I don't, I don't know where we've put it. There it is. Right there in the dark. Oh, I remember what we were going to do in the last session. We were going to pipe in... Uh, some logic lights, weren't we? So that we could actually see what we're doing. But first, I think it's probably more important to set this little wangle-dangle here up. So let's go ahead and drop this on the ground. I'm going to take this bad boy, and I'm going to stick it right there. No, we want that to be an elbow, don't we? 
Let's go ahead and whack this as an elbow like that. And then we'll elbow in just over here, like so. And this one can also be turned around. Actually, let's move it back just one square. And the reason I want to do that is because if we stick a straight with the little valve hook on it right here, then we'll be able to turn it off whenever we damn well please, which is fantastic. And it doesn't really matter what kind of speed or pressure is going into these, this grinder right here, because it just doesn't matter. Okay, is this on? Yes, it is. Okay, good. And now we need the construction hammer so that we can kind of unscrew that and also unscrew that right there. Excellent. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and now grab this off of the T. We'll stick it right there so that it functions. Now we can turn off the grinder whenever we please, but it's probably not going to make a huge difference in the... Whoops, didn't mean to pick that up. Uh, actually, let's knock that into place, because we don't want that to lift uh, outwards at all. All right, now everything should be more or less piped in, except for this here conveyor belt. Should be going right here. Very good. And we also probably want to pipe all of this stuff in as well, don't we? So we'll get rid of that T-junction because we're not going to pipe in the grinder from above. We're going to be piping it in from here. And the reason I want to do that is because I want the, the water cleaners to affect this grinder right here. So we probably want another T-junction coming in from one of these. Actually, let's go ahead, grab this construction hammer again. Uh, we'll knock this out of place, uh, we'll take this and we'll throw it on the floor and then we'll take this elbow, we'll replace this with a T-junction as it was literally before we started messing with things, right there. And now we're going to put this back, we're going to hammer it in place as well, when I find the hammer, right there. Good, let's go ahead and hammer that in and now we want straight pipes. We want straight pipes leading into all of the clean water reservoir that we have. I'm going to get on top of this. Because we're going to be plugging in a bunch of straights all at once. Like that. Awesome. One more here. Get another one. And then we're probably going to want a T-junction there as well. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to recycle it like so. I don't see any T-junctions down here, annoyingly. Yeah, they're not, they're, there's none like kind of sitting out and about. So we'll just grab a new one. And we'll put this bad boy right there. Excellent. So everything should be fully piped in. Theoretically. Very theoretically. Uh, this pipe goes into the machinery just over there. Could probably get rid of it, actually, and just... Put a T-junction here, maybe? Actually, you know what? Let's take this little doohickey, and we'll put it on the other side of this right here. Like so. And then this can be a T-junction. We're going to move all of these pipes a little bit closer, so we can conserve the pressure a little bit better. So we'll get that off. We'll get this T-junction off. We'll put this elbow in place like so all of these can get dismantled and what do we need we probably need another t-junction just over here right yes so we'll take this one we'll recycle it move it a little bit closer and here we go and this can pipe upwards and into this right here so we'll get a couple of these straight pipes that we are probably placing in the wrong place for now we'll get two no we'll only get the one lift and then we'll go here drop this on the ground get an elbow from somewhere. That one will do. I know we've made a bit of a mess, but we are re-optimizing the entire workshop. We're, we're gonna we're gonna really, really change this place to, for the best, <laughs> honestly. And then I think after we get to a point where we're just generating enough core stone to keep on getting machinery made up, we're probably gonna go into the DLC area, which I have looked up on the internet. I've looked up all of its quirks and mechanics, and there is literally zero documentation for it anywhere. So we're, we're all gonna be figuring it out by ourselves. Excellent. That is fully piped in. Maybe we want to change that to a T once we start getting more machinery in here, but probably not. Because we can't exactly move these machines like further that way, can we? So we can't move it further back. Alright, I think everything should be turned on now. Right? It should be turned on. Let's try. Let's try to turn it all on. Where's the little valve? Right here. Good. I'll turn that on. All of the machines are going to start pumping out things at an alarming rate. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's go ahead and close that back up and we'll go and find ourselves some repair kits because we do need a bunch of them now. We might actually have some just over here. I think we were using the repair kit bucket as kind of like electrical stuff, maybe? What's this? 
Is this repair stuff? No, it is not. Okie dokie. I don't see any repair stuff. We have made an absolute god-awful mess, though. <laughs> it is disgusting back there. Uh, so there should be another cart somewhere with repair kits. Ah, there it is. Up top. We only need the one repair kit to repair the grinder right here. There we go. Good. And I'll just leave this here in case something goes wrong in the future. Let's go out here and we'll turn this machine back on. See if this monstrosity will actually function now. Kind of. It's, it's kind of functioning. Okay. Really struggling to... Whoop, nope. Don't want to put that there. Uh, I think... I think that the grinder is functioning, but I don't necessarily think that it's functioning well. We are going to do this by hand, by the way. Good. We're not going to use the clear chunks mechanic because I don't want to, necessarily. Good, good, good. Uh, we're also doing this pretty quickly. Man, these chunks are huge, aren't they? We I think we've basically beaten the game at this point, but I still kind of want to min-max the area before we go into the DLC. And we also probably need to start getting into the agriculture as well, because we'll need to do that to beat some of the in-game quests, like the King's Quest and such. All right, we'll get that. Man, those are huge chunks, are they not? Good grief! Okay, I'll process some of these bigger ones before I actually go into the menu and just hit the clear all dirt chunks button right there. Done! All right, so the entire place is now up and running. Yep, they're definitely generating materials as well. I think. Pretty slow, though. Oh, no, here they all come. Why are they all such small chunks? We had a billion gigantic chunks just kind of piled up in the grinder. Wow, this is noisy. Good grief. Okay, let's get away from there. And I'm pretty sure now would be a really good time for a quick workshop cleanup. Because we are probably... Just at that point. Let's go ahead and start sticking these straights into here. I'm not going to move too far away from the spot as well. So we can kind of like consolidate all of them into one single pile. Hopefully we can reach that one. We cannot. That's annoying. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this right there. Excellent. And the T's go in the middle of the cart right here. Good. We've got an elbow as well, which can go right on the corner here. Hopefully it's not going to fall out. It fell out. Okay, let's go ahead and actually just put this on some flat land. Or not. <laughs> or we could angle it at almost a 45 degree pitch, which is not what we want whatsoever. Uh, that's probably a little bit better. Good. Let's go ahead and stick these elbows on the corner. Good. They're balanced. And this one here. Excellent. I'm also going to stick this little water pressure hook here. Just over there. 290 is pretty damn effective. Excellent. Okay. We've got some elbows over here as well that we can probably do with sticking in the cart. There's only two, so I'm not going to bother move the cart. We'll just kind of eyeball it. And last one over here. Got him. Excellent. And we'll put this down. Whoops. Nope, we want that right on the corner. We don't want that in the cart because we'll get mixed up with all the T intersections. Perfect. Is that all of them? More or less, actually. That's more or less all of them. Let's uh, start sticking the lights up. I think that would be a really, really good idea. I don't know how bright they are, though, so let's just... Place one down, stick a lever on the back of it. We'll see just how bright they actually are. Where is our lever? Didn't we buy a lever? I'm sure we bought a lever of some sort. Or maybe it's in here. I do see a little wang dingle down there. What is that? That's a little elbow. Let's go ahead and just jam that into our electrical cart. Good. What's this? That's another switch swatch hook. Uh, we probably actually need to just start placing down these conveyor belts, honestly. Let's get rid of them so we can actually see what we have buried. All right, good. I think we've got a lever in here, but I, I'm not entirely sure. There is, yeah, there is definitely a flip-flop hook, but I don't necessarily think that we have a lever. It's a little annoying, but it's absolutely fine. Okay, uh, so might be one in here, but I highly doubt it. Yep, no, I don't see any levers in there. Okay, we probably have to go and get ourselves a lever from town, don't we? Yeah, I don't see any out here either. Let's stack this somewhere nice. That'll do. And workshop's looking pretty good too. We've got a rake right here. Is that T3? Yes, that is a T3 rake. 
let's actually go ahead and just kind of get rid of all of our crap tools because we've got tier threes now and we don't necessarily need things like a common shovel. Oop, I'm just going to drop it over the railing there for fun. Uh, let's go ahead and stick this hammer on the tool rack right there so we don't lose it. This T2 pickaxe can also get thrown over the ditch right here. Bye-bye. Everybody say bye-bye to the inferior pickaxe. Do we have a saw down here? No. Let's go ahead and just drop that right there. We're just having a quick cleanup at this point. And we definitely need to get rid of all of this crap up here too, don't we? This is all very yucky to look at. Ooh. I do not like. Oh, is that? No, that's a helmet. Got a T-junction right there as well. I'm just going to go ahead and just dismantle all of this so when we actually do get around to it, we can kind of drop it all into the cart. I'll throw it all into the pond. Good. And this one can go into the pond too. And this one as well. And this one too. Nice. And this one as well. Can go down there. Probably want to get rid of that mezzanine floor up there as well now that it's kind of crossed my mind. Because we aren't going to have our sorting system up there whatsoever. All right, good. Drop that into the water as well. And that goes in, and this goes in too. Done! Oh, look at this nice wee mess we've made over here. At least it's kind of like not in the walkway anymore. A bunch of panels up there we could dismantle. I don't see any piping though. It's kind of floating. Except for that one right off in the corner. And a, a straight in an elbow right there too. Yo, man, how old are you and what did you do when you're not working on your YouTube? Oh, I hate to answer your questions. I am 30 years old this year. I am turning 30 in about two months, 29th of October. That's my birthday. And uh, surprisingly, you guys now know when my birthday is and nobody else does. Chat is broken. Let me go ahead and fix that real quickly. Why the hell is YouTube like this? Okay. Gonna pop out chat and copy and paste it into this little box right here. Boop. That should be better. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I'm 30 years old, and when I'm not working on my YouTube, I am sleeping. <laughs> I treat this as kind of like a full-time job, but I'm also entirely responsible for the success of my channel. So whenever I'm kind of like not working on my channel, I feel really, really guilty for not working on my channel. So that's pretty much all I spend all of my time doing. 35 on October the 6th? Hey, What's 30 like? What is, the, what is 30 like? Like, a lot of people have told me when I turned 18, 19, 20 that it's all downhill from here, but no one ever gave me any advice for uh, for 30. Probably because when you hit 30, advice just no longer really applies. You are the person who should realistically be giving the advice. But it seems kind of like... It's the transition from kind of like... Uh, how would I put this without offending anybody? Like, it's the transition from... An immature and irresponsible lifestyle to kind of like you want to do something with your life, as far as I'm aware. I think I developed a little bit early because when I was about 28, I started wanting to make a life for myself. But uh, here in New Zealand, we also have really, really low standards for, for achievements. All right, good. Unless you're in the Olympics, in which case, probably going to get some gold. <laughs> Let's be completely honest. But yeah, it's super weird. It's super weird. Uh, my best friend is going to be turning 30 a month before I do, and I'm just not entirely sure, like, how we should be responding to it. There's no one said anything. All right, I am also going to go out. I'm going to get into the ute. We are going to go to the big lodger store. We're going to get a lever, because I'm pretty sure we don't have one. I don't know. I'm not the average person. I still feel like I'm 21, both physically and mentally. Yeah, tell me about it. Man, I got meningitis when I was 14 years old. And then every, like, four years, I would gain an A, uh, kind of like one year in maturity. So at the moment, I feel like I'm 23, 24. Not physically, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> the age has not been kind to me physically. Although, fit check, still buff. Feels good. But yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. Like, I feel like... Because I, 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 I don't know if I should probably say this on YouTube, but I used to smoke a little bit of the, the devil's lettuce when I was like 25, 26. And now I, my body just like doesn't want to do that. It wants to go and dump productivity somewhere. So it's kind of like, uh, I, I feel like your 20s are made to be pissed away in, in just about every way, shape and form. We don't have any money. Oh, good. We've got a lever right here. Actually, this is a button. We don't want this. Yeah, your 20s is supposed to be pissed away. You're supposed to learn from your mistakes. And if you don't learn from your mistakes, uh, go learn from everyone else's mistakes. But at the same time, 
My body is just like reprioritizing everything that I want in life. It feels so strange. So, so strange. All right, we'll go over here and I'm going to hope that there is actually a little bit of money over at the, the shops because I didn't bring any with me. So you YouTube full time? Yeah, more or less. Zealand standards are very low, so no immediate need for money. How's the economy? I'm very mature. It's not great. Uh, we are in a global recession. I think at the end of last year, our government, the National Party, uh, run by the National Party, who are kind of like a bunch of right-leaning conservatives, and strangely enough, these guys, for the first time, are not malicious. They're just absolute buffoons. Our country is, is for once run by... Stupid, stupid idiots. Like, usually you can kind of, like, feign ignorance and look stupid and people know just, like, below the surface. Like George Bush. George Bush looks stupid, but he ran the CIA for a good 20 years, so how stupid is he really? Okay, we've got no money here. But Chris Luxon, our Prime Minister right now, is an actual buffoon, and he has run our economy into the ground. He's uh, got an $8 billion hole in our economy. Uh, he keeps lying about it. He has put, uh, like, staff freezers on all government utilities, like uh, healthcare and police and fire departments and stuff like that. So you can't hire any new staff. And they're squeezing all the staff that they do have, so the staff are leaving. So um, our entire economy is collapsing inwards um, due to literally idiocy. No money here either. Weird. Where did we live? We didn't take our money with us, did we? Oh, maybe we did. Okay, we're going to go back home. I just did a Chris Luxon. I, I came all the way out here for absolutely nothing because I didn't realise that there was no money. Very funny. Idiots with honor? No, no, no. They are they are literally shameless idiots. Um, this was about four months ago. Chris Luxon tried to claim on a government subsidy for the prime minister where the prime minister's house, the one given basically to them to live in while they are prime minister, uh, called Premier House, uh, there is kind of like this $50,000 subsidy when those when that Premier House has been kind of like... I, uh, what's, the, what's the word for uh, buildings that are kind of, like, closed down because they're unsafe to live in. Whatever that is. Uh, Chris Lexon claimed on it because he just saw it as kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm Prime Minister and I'm entitled to this. And those are his words. Those aren't my words. He, he just kind of, like, made himself entitled to this $50,000 government grant to pay rent while he is not living at that house. But he's also his own landlord. So he was um, taking that subsidy and giving it to himself as his own landlord because he's a piece of garbage. You have a good understanding of the world? I can tell you have a good head on your shoulders. Yeah, I, I do my best. I do my best. I, I had a bit of a spotty past uh, because of the circumstances I grew up in. But these days, I feel like as long as you're growing, you're never wasting time. And the brain is definitely one of those things that a lot of people kind of ignore when they grow it. This game is crazy in size. Yeah, it is. Condemned, that's it. So if the Prime Minister's house is condemned, then uh, the Prime Minister is entitled to a $50,000 grant to subsidise rent while they are Prime Minister. Uh, but Chris Luxon uh, decided, you know what? I'm already my own landlord and I'm not living at Premier House, so I am entitled to it. And he took it. Uh, the entire country slammed him for about a month for being an absolute piece of human garbage and just claiming subsidies that he didn't need after he then spent his entire kind of... Um, his entire leadership role was based on slamming people who were taking government subsidies to feed their children. That's how he was elected. And uh, unfortunately, he did exactly that uh, just because he wanted to. He didn't even have any kids. So that's who we're dealing with. He is he is malicious. He is uh, probably the biggest dumbass that I have ever seen in leadership. Uh, last time we were run by a right wing country, it was run by a guy named John Key. And at least he he, he wasn't an amazing person, but at least he had charisma. He had a family, and if you were in a room with him, you didn't immediately like look for exits because he didn't look like he smelled bad. That kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, let's grab our money before we leave this place again and go get a single lever. But yeah, our, our government right now is running the country absolutely into the ground, and it's probably the first time that I can actually reasonably say that it's being run into the ground because usually it's just like, oh, the government's stupid. They don't know what they're doing because they they don't pass policy that I specifically agree with. Like, usually that's the case, but this time it's it's criminal negligence <laughs> to a nasty extent. Our finance minister also doesn't even know what Bitcoin is, and she can't define a VPN, which is very concerning. Person that runs all of the uh, policy changes for money in the country. Evil. It is a bit evil, isn't it? 
it's 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 a little bit Despicable Me, and he kind of looks like the guy from Despicable Me if uh, the guy from Despicable Me was really really saggy, like kind of like Skinwalker levels of saggy. He's not a pretty man by any means necessary. He looks like a thumb. He he just looks like he he looks like this, right? That's that's pretty much him. Just put some eyes on that, and uh, you've got Chris Luxon to a she to a t. Why, uh, why did I start talking about this? There was a reason for it. Oh, the economy. Yes. Um, so we announced a recession last year. Well, national government announced a recession last year. But we've actually been in one for four flat years. And uh, that government has just been lying about it. Uh, because they, whenever people think, oh, they don't know how to run the country, they get elected out. And they don't want to get elected out. They want a bunch of consecutive terms. So they're, just, uh, they're doing that thing that um, politicians quite famously do where they, where they lie for clout. They're basically clout chasers. Politicians are essentially clout chasers. Professional clout chasers. Hey, Yunsen, have you ever watched Hilda? No, I've never even heard of it. Since recently I've finished it and it's really good. Cool. Wow, we have idiocy here almost exactly like that, but in another dimension with different questions and also no answers. Really? Where do you live? What's, what's your government like? I imagine you're talking about either America or England. Because I know that England is kind of a little bit... A little bit bad at running countries. You, you guys, are, well, maybe not you guys, but England had Bojo for a while. You can just chill at home. You're good on income. Yeah. Uh, fortunately for me, I am permanently crippled and my health is only going to get worse until I die, essentially. Uh, so the government pays me to basically stay at home. And while I'm receiving that, there's also a lot of shame and guilt that comes along with receiving government subsidies, so I'm kind of dedicating my life to the betterment of everybody around me, and that's as best as I can do. And I have a platform as well, so I can kind of like, you know, better everybody's lives around me a, a lot easier as well. America, oh, you poor thing. I am not jealous. I am not jealous of you. Oh, that's such a shame as well. It was, um... Like, Biden had the potential of, of being quite good, didn't he? But unfortunately, he's um a bit of a... A bit of a dottery, a dottery old man who can't really uh, stay awake. Lol, that's fear. I, I, th I think it's fear. I think it's fear. But there is this huge thing, in New Zealand at least, I don't know if it's the same around the world, where kind of like, if you receive any kind of government subsidy, uh, it's regardless on whether or not you have capacity to work or um, whether or not you have qualifications or if you need the subsidy for raising a family, you've got kids, hungry kids and stuff like that. Like, Everybody who hears that you take government subsidies will always point at you and say, Thief! Thief! The taxpayer pays for them to be a lazy piece of garbage. And there is zero way of shaking that reputation because um, the people who pay you uh, work in income. And yeah, mainly just work in income. They are basically told to perpetuate this, this image that the people who receive government subsidies are just lazy dregs of society. Uh, it's 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 a bit silly, and it kind of ties into misinformation with eugenics. But it is definitely there. I don't believe that at all. I'm libertarian. I don't believe in either sides. Yeah, I'm kind of like... I'm, I'm starting to lean away. I'm old now. I'm old enough to say this. I'm starting to lean away from everybody else's views, which is, oh, we need to... We need to start believing in our governments. We, we need to start uh, doing things. We need, like, social issues to be addressed and stuff like that. And... It, it, it doesn't matter what the social issue is. It's going to change in five years anyway, to be quite honest. Like, I've seen so many things come and go. It's ridiculous. Coney, 2012. That was horrible. That was my first skeptical look at society. And uh, I got absolutely slammed for my opinions on Coney, 2012. Because I was of the belief that it was just a waste of time. Like, Ugandan warlord, there's billions of them. There's so many Ugandan war Well, maybe not billions, but definitely, like... Hundreds, if not thousands, of warlords specifically. Not people working for them, but the warlords. And every time the UN goes and sends over packages of food and medicine, the warlords get to it first, and usually because people have already taken a little bit out of it before the warlords get to it, people get their limbs and stuff hacked off as kind of like punishments because they should have gone to the warlords first, which I find absolutely revolting. So I'm always very skeptical when it comes to that kind of stuff anyway. But I did a little bit of research into Kony 2020, uh, 2012 uh, while it was happening, and I found that not only was Kony 2012 not actually located in Uganda while people were searching all around the world for him, um, but many, many people 
were buying all of those lunchboxes and crap just to support the guy who made the Cody 202012 video. So the way I see it, it was just genius marketing. Yet the world got absolutely, I don't know, like duped, I would say. The world got duped for money. It's a bit foggy to be fair. I never understood the science picture. Oh uh, yeah, Biden is a, he, he's a little bit sus, isn't he? Because they've always got that Clinton reputation now, the Democrats, don't they? Because the, the Clintons were doing that whole like Lolita Express stuff. We the people should be running our world's government. That's anarchy, and I can tell you for a fact it's never worked. Although, in saying that, socialism has uh, also never really worked. I think the most successful instance of it has been China so far, and the reason for that is because they're more of a, f more of a fascism at this point than a uh, socialism. You know, you are restricted um, access to civil utilities based on your like social standing. That's, that, that is inherently a fascist way of running a government. All right, let's go ahead and drop this right here. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm a capitalist. I think that capitalism is actually the most effective way forward, but I also really, really believe that not everything should be privatised. There should be government utilities as fallbacks for the people who can't afford them, which is not capitalist whatsoever. Uh, but I do also believe that everyone should have access to, like, flat screens, TVs, and smartphones and stuff like that. Because if we're all socialist or communist or something like that, chances are we'd just be still using the same government-issued Nokia and stuff like that. Hilda was good. Yeah, Hilda was cute, a little show. No, oh, that's cool. I don't believe in anarchy either. Yeah, I definitely don't believe anarchy is the way. I saw a review on a parent reviewing site. One of them said I watched it with my four-month-year-old child, and the show was pretty good until a kid got their heads chopped off. How would a four-month-old remember that? There's no shot a four-month-old would remember that. That's not trauma that would ever go with them anywhere. Okay, I'm still going to pipe this in with a few more straights. I hope we over-purchase straight pipes here, because we, we need a lot of them. I'm just going to have it run alongside the conveyor belt, because that's probably where we're going to need the most vision, too. It was a four-year-old? Okay, that makes a bit more sense. I'm always skeptical when people say, oh, my my child, my four-month-year-old child is um, speaking in, like, perfect English and stuff like that. Because they can't. <laughs> There's no way in hell a four-month child can, like, speak in perfect English. But a lot of parents, like, lie about it and brag about it and stuff for social standing. Which, again, is fascist. Or merit meritocracy. So it looks like the votes are leaning towards my Minecraft challenge list. Very happy with this. I'm probably going to do it anyway. It's just to the extent, like, I don't know if people are going to want to see me do every single challenge because that'll take thousands of hours. But if, if people do actually want to see me um, do that whole list, then absolutely perfect. And it ties into another little uh, project I've got working on. I, I'd probably tell you about it now. It, it's called either Tickets or Stickets. Uh, it's a little app that I'm de developing. Essentially, the point of it is... You put a little pin on your phone screen, uh, that's kind of an overlay to whatever you're doing in the background or on your desktop or something like that. You click on the pin and it opens up a big checklist um, of kind of like, whenever you click on the words in the checklist, it expands how to do the item on the checklist and you've got little checkboxes next to it as well and they change color every time you um, tick them or change them and stuff like that. So that is kind of what I am waiting to basically have at least functional when I get to remnant or Remnant 2 100% runs. That's essentially what I'm waiting on with that. We set the chat off. Ah, uh, chat always goes off in the end, doesn't it? Okay, I think I can put this here without it congesting anything. Yes, perfect. Let's actually... Let's get... Let, let's, let's turn this on. Let's turn this on. I think this is in the way, actually. Let's uh, move this. And I think we probably maybe want to put a T-junction right here. Perhaps I'll keep that straight up there because we do definitely want it. We want a T junction right here, and I'm going to have it facing outwards like so, because we don't really want it to cover here. And then we'll put an elbow on it like so. Uh, please, yes, perfect, like that. And we'll have two straights coming downwards like that, and yes, one more straight, I think. Right there. Good. I think we probably filled this card up a little bit poorly. And then we want a elbow right here. Go ahead and hook it in like so. And then we want a lever right there so that we can kind of like hook the lights up, right? I want to flip it upside down as well because I actually know. 
Let's put it on the right way up this time. Boom! Oh my god, we can see. Oh, that's so much nicer. I love this. Wee! Ah. I believe capitalism as well. My man! My dead space man! That's amazing. Yeah, always in the end, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a, um, a capitalist at heart. I always will be as well. Like, when I, you know, when I was young, I was like, I kind of like the altruism of socialism or communism or something that's just not like, you know, greedy uh, companies trying to take profit as much as they can. But in my age, I realized that the altruism is only as good as the people doing it. And generally, people, when, when people kind of like get elected because they're good people, they're not generally surrounded by amazingly good people. And that's where the whole systems kind of crumble. Everybody needs to be a good person for a utopia, and not everybody is just inherently a good person. So it doesn't work. It, it'll never work in the end. You're probably more likely to get anarchy to function. Yep, that was a bad little line there. I wanted to go straight above the conveyor belt so I can pipe in all of these lights that come all the way through here. Ah, looks good. Very good. Whenever I talk about any product, everybody tells me I sound like a salesman. Yeah, tell me about it, right? I'm a, I, I really like marketing. I kind of like researching in my spare time and stuff like that. I'm really interested in Madison Avenue. Even kind of like, I don't want to say I support the Nazis in any way, shape or form, but Joseph Goebbels was a master at his craft in terms of like propaganda and marketing. So uh, I can't help but notice the connection between a lot of our modern day kind of tried and true methods of marketing and the, the National Socialists ways of just putting propaganda forwards. Very smart. I am the number one salesman, Spamton G. Spamton. Too late, bro, you're cancelled. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> I did not see that coming. I wonder if people still get really, really upset by that line. When I was streaming back in 2019, I, I said that once and uh, chat just went off being all like, oh, you don't know what they had to go through and, and uh, well, you weren't there. And I had to point out, well, I mean, neither were you. I learned about it in school probably the same way as you did. Mr. Viewer. Uh, people get really, really upset by that kind of stuff, though. A little bit unfortunate. I, I don't really think that's... Like, you learn from history, or you're doomed to repeat it kind of stuff, right? Again? Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to talk about this kind of stuff pretty frequently. I used to be a bit of an edged lord. I don't necessarily think I used to be a great person, but, like, when I turned about 27, 28, I started kind of, like, reshaping my personality to be a little bit more palatable. Because uh, I, I didn't necessarily like who I was turning out to be. Just hyper-aggressive, argumentative, that kind of stuff. You know, like people are. Like people usually become. Now, we've probably actually got enough core stone to make another couple of these machines by now, which is pretty crazy. Look at these lumps. These are some big lumps. Good grief. Okay, we'll come all the way down here and break neck record speeds. Let's go ahead and bust out these. We'll weigh them. We'll see what we've got. That is 280 kilos. I'm pretty sure we can do something with that. Let's go ahead and drop that on the ground. Oh, that fell out. Awkward. Go ahead and weigh this one next. We have 803 kilos. Do we have a bucket around here to pull all of our ores in? Because if we don't, I'm going to swear and, and um, crap, and I'm also going to pee myself and just lose all bodily functions. Jesus, that's a big emerald. My God. Okay. So, kind of want to put a light there too, but it's going to block our path outwards. I did see a bucket on one of the carts around here, didn't I? It was, it was somewhere. Maybe it wasn't on a car. Maybe it was in the back of the truck. Hard to say. Huh. Somebody better not make a Yinsen out of context part one video. Uh, you're up to part three, actually. Red Rux has already <laughs> made a couple of clips from the streams. He asked me to say a couple of things, and I just said no. But I, I didn't, like, process it in time that he was going to make a an out of context clip. And I read out his message, which means I said what he requested regardless. Jaded? Jaded? Oh, I'm not a, I'm not terribly jaded, necessarily. I'm not as emotional. I'm not as overly emotional as I used to be, though, which is actually fantastic. I love that, uh, kind of like, whenever I hear about something emotionally charged, I can now look at it and think, oh, that is either one of two things, which is someone who's upset or motivated in some way, shape, or form by, uh, usually hatred or spite, um, or, oh, that's a, that's an ad. I'm consuming an ad. Disguised as an emotionally charged post or, or something like that. 
and you can usually tell as well because if you look at the platform and see who uh, kind of like said a lot of the emotionally charged stuff you can see if it's like BuzzFeed or Huffington Post or New York Times or something like that and they're just trying to like make you angry so that you read the whole article so they get ad revenue which doesn't really work anymore hilariously not me people yeah yeah a lot of people are kind of jaded these days I think Generation Alpha is like super jaded which I would probably also see as a bit of a strength because honestly emotionally charging people is not amazing when people grow they become jaded yeah I definitely agree on that sense uh, we don't want to be in here we want to jump all the way down into the pit and we want to grab our ingots don't we let's go ahead just leap off of here like an absolute stupid ape land on this bridge I'm getting a little bit of frame dip which is awesome it's fantastic actually uh, let's go ahead and just drop this on the ground. We'll put all of our ingots in here. I think we need 100 per machine, don't we? So we've got 280 right here. I wish we could set up a scale up top side, but we can't. How much ore do you need for this? We need quite a bit, actually. Uh, I am going to be packing out Ice Helm with just an absolute ass load of machines. Like, as many machines as you can fit in your own ass, which could be heaps, for all I know. I don't know what, what kind of things that you stick in your ass there, Dead Space Man, but it could be heaps. It could be not very many. It could be heaps. Quite likely heaps, got to be said. Quite likely you could fit a lot of machines up your ass if you really tried hard enough, but I don't know how many we're going to necessarily need for this little excursion that we've got going on. Okay, let's go ahead and make another one of these machines. Boom. Hopefully that's a drill. Let's check. It is a drill. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to drop this on the ground over here, and we'll see if we can't get another one. Basically, we're just going to leave all of our ingots up here anyway. Oh, there's the other bucket. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny that I lost my bucket and it, turned, uh, it ended up being in the same place that I left the, the second one too. Okay, we don't have enough for the second machine, but we are getting core stone at a fairly alarming rate. I'm going to take this all out of context. No, no, don't take any of that out of context. Okay, let's go ahead, come down here. We've got a lot of conveyors as well, so we can basically set this up as soon as we want. Please don't fall on the conveyor. Excellent. Done. Uh, we can actually just set this up right here, right now. Right there. Good. And I'll get another tea pipe because we need it. Mm, tea pipe. Right there. Thank you. Let's come all the way over here and we'll hook this bad boy up. Uh, right there. Good. Now we need to stick some soil into its bum bum, don't we? We'll take the shovel, which is conveniently placed over here, and I'll stick it on the ground and not in the drill, because apparently that's how you make the drill work. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, it's not working. No? Nothing? Oh, right. Uh, we got to actually turn it on, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's functioning. Perfect. Great. Nice. What I mean is, how much ore do you need to get automatic lights to be built and machines running themselves? There is not actually the infrastructure for that. You have to manually craft every single item in this game that does automated mining for you, which is kind of where the game gets uh, to its its limitations. I would say that you've probably beaten the game. Once you get down here, you get maybe 20, 30 of these machines just pumping out ores and stuff, because then you could essentially just go up to the little smelter over here. Uh, this one right here has core stone. You can just dump that straight into the cast, grab an ingot, go up, up top side, get a machine, come down here. By the time you've done that, you've got another ingot ready to go to get another machine. How do you know the limit for the amount of things that can be stuck up there, bro? I'm assuming, I'm, I'm extrapolating from incomplete data that there are a lot of things that Dead Space Main could, could probably uh, stick up his, up his bottom. Or her bottom. I'd say sometimes. What data? Incomplete data. Incomplete data. I made it up. Bro, what do you watch? Ah, uh, Markiplier sometimes. That's where I get my data from, usually. If I ever need a fact, I'll go to Markiplier, because he doesn't lie. And he always verifies his information before he sticks it on the internet. Cap. <laughs> Hard cap. Okay, uh, so... Again, we're actually now at a point where we just have to wait for ages. We'll probably just go ahead and... set everything in stone here with this hammer. I'm not going to set that one in stone right there. Set that one in stone. All these pipes we could probably just knock in place because they aren't going to go anywhere. Good, 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 good. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with what we've got so far, to be quite honest. 
It's a shame the last thing we did was lighting. Because we basically did two episodes of this game in the dark. Okay, uh, set that one in stone, set that one in stone. That can stay there as well. All of these machines can stay where they are because they are most optimal where they are. Perfect. Righty ho! Just got an auto save. Perfect. Yeah, okay, so let's go ahead. We'll go back to the king because I think we may be able to do his quest by the time we end this episode. Which would be absolutely fantastic. If we can polish off the base game, and I'll consider basically doing the King's Quest to be the end game, just done, then we'll be in a really, really good spot. We've got almost 20,000 prospecting tokens, so we're never going to run out of, like, core stone machinery or anything like that either. I think we're probably done just, like, setting up the infrastructure. We now just need to, like, pipe in lots of machines in sequence. And then have them all go into smelters, because we don't want the frame drop. Oh, I was hoping I'd be crushed by the elevator. But yeah, anyone else got any, like, ideas for endgame that we could we could do? Because essentially, when I finish the vanilla endgame, I'm going to be going into the DLC, we're going to be checking out uh, the IC areas. Now, I did take a look at a guide on the internet about, like, what's in the DLC, but again, there's no documentation whatsoever for the game itself on the wiki, on the Bridgeport wiki, anything like that. And a lot of the mechanics in the DLC have been fleshed out in function, but there's no documentation for it. What the F? What is... <laughs> it deleted me cussing? Oh yeah, we'll do that. I've got like very light auto, uh, auto moderation on the YouTube chat function. When I say light, I mean it's actually very, very strict. I'm surprised how strict it is, but I can't turn it off because every now and then we'll get some wankers coming in just insulting chat for no reason whatsoever. And removing cussing uh, just kind of decentivizes those people from insulting real viewers uh, while I ban those people. I've only had to ban like three people on YouTube though. It's actually been quite nice. Like on Twitch, when I was streaming on Twitch, I streamed on there as kind of like a hobby level for about four years. And across that time, I probably permanently banned well over 200 people from my channel. On here, on YouTube, I have shadow banned three people. I haven't had to go as far as to permanently ban people, which is fantastic. I love that so much. All right, here we are. I know we drove like absolute ass to get here, but, you know, it functions. W moderation for the video. I know, it's pretty handy in a way. But it can annoy people. Okay, we definitely need to get into the agriculture. Can we just go up here? No, we actually do have to automate agriculture. Oh, no. Uh, okay, I'll do that. Let's take this lady's note right here. She wants a soup that has 300 beetroot and 300 broccoli. Jesus, this lady's hungry. I need to be able to find all of those quest uh, billboards as well. All right, let's gap it out of here. While we're waiting for all of that core stone to generate, we probably just want to get into the agriculture side now, don't we? Because that's probably the one thing we've been neglecting. Okay, I'm going to slip and slide over here. Probably also want to get all of the items from all of the mining sites as well. Because there are a bunch of kind of like hidden artifacts down below the soil, which is pretty good. I'm so used to being able to say whatever I want. Almost every channel I mod, I don't know why. Well, maybe it's because they don't have any automation on it. Imagine having TTS. Could probably actually do it. Could ha I could definitely have TTS with the moderation that it's got on that now. And I was kind of like thinking of sticking in a little bit of a hook that just reads all of YouTube chat as TTS so I don't have to look at it. Does this game have music and sound effects? Uh, yeah, it's, it's got a bunch actually. i probably see if I've turned them up loud enough. I think I would have turned them down a little. Yeah, music's turned all the way down. All of the rest of it is down pretty low. If I go in close to this, you should be able to hear the car, but the sound effects for the game are pretty low, realistically. And I don't, I don't want to enable music, especially with my last experience dealing with Undertale. I've now had all of my disputes rejected, all of my copyright claim disputes rejected under fair use. So, uh, Toby Fox's company, the, the guys who manage his content ID, are uh, screwing him real bad. Screwing him real bad for money. You can, you can also set to speak the name first. Oh, that'd be perfect. 
I know that you can do it on Twitch. YouTube is really, really fiddly with their chat though. Like the hook that you've got up there, I the the way I got I have this here is I have the YouTube chat, normal YouTube chat, and then I green screened out the background. It was as simple as that. I just took the one consistent color that is in the background of the YouTube chat. I green screened it out. And that's why every now and then someone will post with an icon that just looks a little bit sus in the chat. But that is the only way that I've found that you actually get it uh, functioning because hooks don't work on YouTube. They work really well for Twitch. They don't work for YouTube whatsoever. Don't worry, sometimes it deletes comments on the absolute most minor things possible, such as the words kill and cool. And it's not consistent speaking of. Let's see, let me say this time. Yep, looks like it deleted that message, whatever you said. Materia music is BS. Yeah, they are absolute garbage, aren't they? What they have been doing with Undertale music is insane. Toby Fox literally said that anybody can use his music without credit. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, let me actually show you something really, really annoying. Because I went ahead and I saved um, direct permission for me to be able to use... No, go away, Sublime. I saved the uh, permission. Where is it? Nope, that is Undertale. Where the hell would I have put it? Probably on the desktop. I don't... Oh, actually, I do know how to get to the desktop. I don't know if you guys are seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. What's a control period? There's a keyboard command that uh, minimizes every window. I can't remember what they are. Oh, well. Looks like I'm going into File Explorer. Get that off of there so I don't dox myself. So... I'll get a nice view of this agriculture as well while I do this. Don't worry. I got you back, everyone. Right there. Watch all those carrots. Here, stop. So I have... Okay, I'm going to bring up Firefox because apparently it's my default browser. This right here. This right here is an official post by Toby Fox. And every time I dispute a copyright claim, I literally copy and place the URL from this here post by Toby Fox himself saying... Oh, wait. If you've ever uploaded a YouTube video containing Undertale slash Deltarune music, especially gameplay videos, and receive a copyright notice, always dispute it and it should be resolved in your favour. We apologise for the inconvenience. Pretty explicit, right? Uh, pretty, pretty hard to deny that, isn't it? Uh, however, this is what I'm dealing with now. Literally, just dispute flat out rejected. So I'm now disputing the, the music claims and they have started to manually reject every single claim that I make, which is uh, not what Toby Fox asked them to do. That is the opposite of what Toby Fox asked them to do. And I tweeted at him, but I think he's too busy with Delta and to really give two hoots. Don't you... It's like an inner circle. You become Yinsen Cult. Inside joke. I can send you a link to a channel that I'm heavily into and has this feature. The channel is nearly 500 days straight on YouTube. Ah! That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, that's what I'm dealing with when it comes to materia. They are absolute ass. Like, in every single way, shape, and form, they are just ass to deal with. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to go take this money, and we're going to go and buy a harvesting truck so that we can kind of see if it actually fits beneath all of this piping that we've already set up. And if it doesn't, we're probably going to have to reshape a lot of the agriculture that we've gotten here to make it a little bit more accessible. Okay. So we'll go all the way over here. We do need a little bit of money. I don't see any at the back of the truck. Let's actually go to ice and we'll get a gold bar and we'll just get heaps and heaps of money because we're going to need it for this agriculture anyway. You're wasting water? I'm not wasting water. The ocean is literally not going anywhere. And then the water goes through the soil and back out to the ocean. So if anything, I'm, I'm wasting salt because I'm dumping the salt straight onto crops which should prevent them from grow growing altogether. And then I'm filtering the um, purified water from the soil and the sand out back into the ocean. So I'm actually doing a bit of a service. Okay, we'll come back in here. I'm gonna get a gold bar. We're gonna go back into town. We're gonna see if we can't go and buy one of those big old uh, harvesters. It's a big vehicle. And there's not really any easier way of doing the agriculture. That's about as good as it'll get. Wasting water. Is that what we're mining on the surface? Yes, we are mining agriculture on the surface. Uh, sorry, I'm pixel hunting. I'm 
pixel hunting on my feet. Whee! Nice. Good. So, down here we've got some gold. Just wait for it to all get in there before I tip it over and make a mess all over the floor. Good. I'm going to drop that there. I'm just going to walk all the way up. Probably didn't need to stick it into the beast's mouth, but it's just going to pump it out next to the, the ute anyway. Oh, we're mining sodium. Yes, we are mining sodium. And we're using the delicious sodium to uh, grow our crops. You going for crops? Corn? We only have access at the moment to tomatoes and carrots, but... What the hell am I doing? Let's go down here. Let's go get the lights. Let's go light up the crops. Because quite frankly, I, I don't want to be stumbling around in the dark if we're going to be dumping into this for ages. I now know just how great the lights are. Go around here. Going to grab all of the lights, which are right here. Whoa, that's some paper drop. Take me. Take me to the end. Please. For the love of God. Oh my God. <laughs> Yucky. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's kind of fixed itself a little bit. Wow, that was revolting. Can you do anything with the lava? Uh, not down here, no. But there is a DLC. I'm just going to get off this, pick it straight back up. There is a DLC that allows you to kind of like use lava and stuff. So we're going to be doing that basically after we do the King's Quests. And maybe go and kind of prospect for the artifacts that are hidden below the surfaces of some of the locations that we... Some we already own, some we don't already own. But we are going to be kind of like trying to get them as well. Because I think there's an achievement for collecting all of them. And they're not going to be too hard to find if we just nuke everything. But yeah, we're doing absolutely fine by this point. I don't know if there's a more effective way of doing the agriculture though. So we may want to kind of think of perhaps a, a better way of watering the crops. Because I know it's going to be a little bit annoying when it comes to the frame rate. And the reason I'm picking up this cart over and over again is because we have to uh, kind of like turn around every time and it's very slow to do so the frame rate tripped me out i know it's weird isn't it when you see low frame rate but i'm moving just absolutely fine ah just got crushed crushed by an elevator that was crazy it was happening across death loop as well i didn't realize but so when death loop came out it was probably one of the best roguelike games that i have probably ever played honestly i didn't see anybody on youtube playing a playthrough of it and when I tried to stream it, I realized that it just runs like absolute ass. <laughs> like in recording software, not when you're actually playing it. It looks fine when you're actually playing it, but it runs like absolute ass when you're recording it. So there was like this weird kind of like half a frame per second frame rate every now and then. And I'd just be moving around absolutely fine. Just looks so weird. I'm getting a coffee. Good choice. Good choice. If you're in a fight in a school, who do you think would you beat more easily the quiet kid or the emo kid well easily the emo kid because i was the emo kid and the quiet kid is usually armed right <laughs> that's the meme <laughs> yeah no back in uh, back in high school i was an emo kid and by the time i was in high school i'd already had almost a decade's worth of martial arts experience so i was the emo kid that kind of like uh, people were a little bit afraid of pissing me off when it kind of got out that I had such a huge amount of martial arts experience. And I'm not just talking about like boxing or Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean like traditional Muay Thai, Japanese jiu-jitsu, uh, judo, a little bit of Jeet Kune Do because I was quite quick as well. Uh, a lot, a lot of Kung Fu as well. Wushu, I was quite good at Wushu, just like generalized lock flow and stuff like that. Uh, so by the time I was in high school, um, that, that was kind of what I was really, really good at. And a lot of people just kind of stopped messing with me once they started seeing that I could, you know, hive somebody into, a, into an arm lock and then flip them over my hip. Quite rough. I had to coincidentally drop my resolution before it happened and you're in slow motion too. That is trippy. Emo kid is an easy one. It can be. I had a, a, when I was an emo kid, a lot of kids turned out to be emo kids because they were bullied anyway and they just ended up hanging around me because I was, I was big and scary and intimidating and stuff. Well, maybe not big, but, you know, I was, I was muscular and quick. Okay, so we probably actually need to start fisting a lot of these materials here into a bucket of some sort. And maybe we want to space these out so it's like T straight, T straight. Like, if I take this one off and I replace it, would that mess with what we've got kind of going on here? 
Let's see. Let's turn that around. And that one also. Okay, nothing's falling on... You're not falling on this one. Oh, it's falling on top of the tomatoes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So let's go ahead. Oh, we forgot to get the money, didn't we? We'll go, we'll get that money, we'll sell it, and then we'll go and buy a harvester, because I'm not doing all of that by hand. Jensen Muscle Law. You were a bully. I hate to say so, but um, I was kind of a product of my environment, and unfortunately, uh, I had a real dickhead stepdad who was quite huge and big, and he used his weight to kind of um, scare people and get what he wanted. So um, that ended up being what I learned for the first 17 years of my life. So, yeah, I, I was a bit of a bully, but I only really bullied people who kind of reached out to bully other people in the first place. I didn't have any, like, savior complex or anything like that. It was just kind of like I didn't like people going out and just using fear as a strategy of getting what they wanted. So I, I used fear to stop them from doing so. And I, was I ended up being very good at it. And if that turns out to have made me a bully, then so be it. So be it. I was a bully. You turn yourself around? Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Uh, I am a redemption story at its core. No, like, uh, <laughs> I, I was a bully for a number of years, and it didn't really bother me up until the point where I kind of realized, hey, I probably shouldn't be such a garbage person in life. Otherwise, it's going to be really, really difficult for me to kind of live. Makes you a good person, not a bully. Yeah, but uh, <sighs> the thing is, right, good people just inherently do not want to commit violent acts or aggress against people whatsoever. And I was a very aggressive, angry kid. So I, I don't think I was a good person initially. I think I grew into be a good person after I kind of tamed my my burning need to piss on people who pissed on others. <laughs> like, it's as simple as that, really. I was I was a bit of a an awful person. I just kind of... I, I used it to for, for good reasons. It was more enabling than anything else. 170 grand, that's actually bugger all for what we are getting on the MILF's aquifer. Remember when we went to Milf's Aquifer? That's embarrassing. And we got 600,000 in one single ingot? That was pretty crazy. All right, we'll take this off to get ourselves that giant machine, I think. We'll drive over to the agriculture city and then we'll drop it in. But yeah, I know from personal experience, it's never too late to be a better person. It's never too late to learn from your mistakes. You went in the other direction than your father? Stepfather. My my father was actually a very good man. It's just my um my my biological mother and my biological father. They divorced when I was about two years old, and I didn't really have a lot of opportunities to hang out with my uh, biological father until I was about seventeen years old. Um, uh, since then, I was kind of like uncomfortably living under my stepfather's roof out in this horrible rural area where the mortality rates of teenagers were incredibly high. So, like, if you if you made a friend out where I kind of grew up, you can almost guarantee that they would not survive their childhood. And that was a fairly consistent thing where I lived, unfortunately. Uh, where is it? Where is that truck? But I, I learned from my father after I realized that my... I, I learned from my stepfather. I learned that he was a garbage person. I didn't want to be like him. And uh, I kind of realized that I had the opportunity to do so only when... I could have a, a, a better influence, which was my biological father. It's a shame that he wasn't around much when I was younger. And it wasn't really his fault either. It was all the stepfather getting really insecure and, and stuff like that. Being a real dick. If you did this when you were older, that you'd be great at it? What, telling people that it's never too late to be better? That's kind of why I have this platform right here. It's good motivation. We also need tokens to buy that truck. So we're going to have to go and uh, sell a bunch of vegetables anyway to a bunch of people who are hungry. Which is a little bit of a shame. I have a similar story. Didn't live with my stepdad, though. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of good stepdads, but ultimately I've seen more crap stepdads than I've seen normal stepdads. I feel real bad for my sisters, though. They're my half-sisters, and my stepdad was their biological father, and, you know, he ended up being an absolute dirtbag, so... I feel even worse for them. I feel, I feel way worse for my little sisters. Uh, let's consolidate this money right here. Boop. We got 240 buckery... 1,000 buckery booze right there. Let's go and get some quests. We're going to have to get some quests to kind of like get up enough money to be able to get all the stuff, which means we probably need to go ahead and start harvesting all of these by hand, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is, I suppose. Let's go ahead, grab that tomato. We're going to need a lot of those tokens to get ourselves the truck. Like a lot of them. Two and a half thousand is actually no joke, especially when you're only getting like 50 per quest. 
that's I, I feel like it's a pretty common story to be honest and like it would have bothered me some years ago if uh like i was just publicly talking about my upbringing because i'm i'm quite embarrassed that i was living with this, that stepfather such an insecure and angry man uh, but now i'm just like at peace with it and so many other people have, have similar stories as well i, I kind of want to normalize it Jensen is awesome oh thanks man thanks main uh, what do we want to do with these carrots? We probably want to make it into a carrot soup, right? Tomatoes. We have tomatoes in here. Probably need another bucket, though, realistically. We've got a pot there. Uh, we should probably end up hooking up the oven, too. Or maybe just at least placing it somewhere where it can let us cook. I think that's probably good. Yeah, it's, it's fully functional. Okay, so if we drop that on there, that's going to start cooking. Let's go look for some quests, because we are uh, we are going to need some. Just burped into the microphone. You guys are welcome. A little bit of a bonus burp for you there. If we knew you more, then you are awesome. Oh, that's sweet. That's so sweet. But no, I'm, I'm just a good role model. I feel like I've got a responsibility on the platform. If all of this is YouTube, by the way. YouTube has kind of given me a paradigm shift in my life, and I, I have a responsibility to everybody that I know to be a good role model, especially if I'm not going to actually be working a job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I got brain damage from um, from that meningitis I mentioned earlier. This is crazy, just watching you hook up all this crap. I didn't really hook much up. I just placed down a, a stove and it just worked. Get this for me. Uh, no, absolutely not. So we need to get some quests now. She got nothing. I thought there'd be more quests around here. The quests are really few and far between, actually. It's, it's really hard to find any. And we need some quests to be able to buy the other seeds, which is a little bit of a pain. Because I don't know where to get them. Probably over here, to be honest. What are these? Corn, onions, broccoli, beetroot. So these two we need for the king's quest to get in through. The oh, my God. Cut veggie stacker. Ah, compresses cut vegetables. That's cool. A veggie dicer hook. Oh, so we can automate it. A sprinkler. Whoa, that's expensive. Wow. I can't afford that. Uh, we've got some maple trees. Whoa! So much stuff over here. I've never actually taken a look at the potentials of the agriculture. I've just kind of been fiddling around with it. For real? That's insane? What, just like putting it down? Or it's you or, or that it's YouTube that's kind of like stimulating me to be a better person. Because every time someone comes onto my channel, I want them to leave kind of like better than before. Almost every single time. And if that's if that if, if that forces me to kind of like psychoanalyze somebody and make sure that all of their life choices are leading them into something that they're happy with, so be it. Tried DNA force, I used it once, got all the feeling back in my left index finger, or brain force? What the hell is that? I, I got a leaky adrenaline valve in my brain. That's that's kind of what I'm dealing with. I'll look that up now though. Yeah, essentially what happened is when I was 14, I got meningitis and um, I, I was kind of admitted way later than I should have been to the hospital, and uh, I was about maybe half a day past the point of no return. Fortunately, I had a specialist fly down from Auckland who uh, was experienced with meningitis and managed to kind of like just essentially save my life. And a lot of people say, um, you know, oh, that must have really valued life for you. But no, it didn't actually. It really devalued life for me because then I realized, oh, well, I can cheat death if I want. It's not actually that hard to do. No, it's taken back by your brain loss. Oh, I'm a smart guy. I'm, I'm a naturally smart guy. The, the brain damage, it's, um, it's, it's, it's probably the worst thing about me. And it affects more my memory than my cognitive abilities. Uh, but because of the leaky adrenaline valve, uh, I only have like 20, 30 minutes of energy that I can expend in a day because the adrenaline will collapse my body if I expend too much more than that. I look up DNA force. I've never heard of that. DNA force. What is this? Located in Canada. Ooh, and a, a reason to go to Canada. Oh, it's a pill. Okay. Oh, on InfoWars. Not sure if that'd be for me, to be honest. I already take a medication. It's called a mantadine. It's um, pretty good, actually. It definitely has restored a lot of the kind of like memory issues that I had. It's good. It's really, really good. You have no adrenaline or too much? Way too much. I've got way too much adrenaline at all times. Like, um... I take anti-anxiety medication as well called amitriptyline. I take that because it used to be where if I just held my hand out here, I'd get massive tremors. 
I have very, very, like, minor tremors. You can actually kind of, like, see it if I... I move real close. Maybe not too much, but... But yeah, uh, it used to make my body all shaky and stuff, and uh, my lowest point was kind of where I would spend two days flat in bed, not being able to get up, and then I'd have to vomit, so I'd have to crawl across a house to vomit in a toilet. It's, that's rough. Not, uh, like, hands and knees either, just, like, elbow crawls. Like, it was so rough. That was uh, the worst point in my life, honestly. And I will never forget it either. I'll never forget that point. Because I don't ever want to be like that again. Uh, let's go ahead and just, like, dump this into the pot then, I suppose. Because we also need carrots. Whoop. Soup? Or do we need to cut them first? Maybe. Uh, we did get a knife, didn't we? No, that's a trowel. Huh. Okay. So how do we cook these? Weird. Dream is like uncomfortable or just anxious? No, it, it, it wasn't like, um, it, it wasn't an actual like anxiety condition. Like I wasn't afraid to go outside or, or see people or anything like that. But I had so much adrenaline, uh, just like going in my blood at all times that my body was just giving out. Because adrenaline, it, it, your body's response is supposed to be fight or flight. And if you're always in fight or flight, then um, you're in a really, really bad spot. I ended up getting um, something called hypervigilance as well, which is kind of like where... Your body is hypersensitive to light and sound and taste and stuff like that. And I got diagnosed once as schizophrenic incorrectly before I kind of like figured out the, the brain damage with a, a doctor who was working with me long term. And uh, it, it, I got diagnosed with schizophrenia by the psychiatrist who uh, saw me for about eight straight minutes. Something specific. It was a little bit of a shame. And the reason for this is because I was seeing things that weren't there, which is not actually a symptom of schizophrenia, hilariously, because I read the DSM-5. Uh, it's not a symptom. But because of the adrenaline in my system, my brain would make up threats, like shadows kind of like moving in places and blind spots and such. So it was very scary. And I could like, I could hear voices. And it, again, it didn't take me until uh, I was working with this, this doctor who specialised in kind of like, very, very generalized fatigue-based illnesses to realize that what I was hearing was not voices in my head, but physically our neighbors speaking in the next house. Crazy. What a story. I wish someone was there for you. Yeah, no one was there for me, but because of that, I'm here so I can be there for anybody who has ever gone through that as well. Anyone ever gets chronic fatigue, I am always there to help. There's no one here who wants us to make them food. A little bit annoying. Yeah, it's pretty rough. You, can, you can't take Nitro 24-7. The vehicle will fall apart. Your body was actually very tired. That's exactly what it was, yeah. See, so yeah, I was, like, medicated for schizophrenia as well, which ended up making all of the symptoms worse, too, because they're not great for you. Uh, that, was, that was rough as well. I think it was the medication that probably um, made me get to the point where I had to, like, crawl along the floor. Because I think I was adjusting to the medication at that point. I can't find anybody who will actually give us anything for the, the agriculture now. I'm hoping we're not caught in like a doom loop or something like that. Bit of a shame. But yeah, it's a, it's a rough story. It's a, it's a real rough story. You can only have adrenaline in your body for so long before your body just kind of like gives up on functioning and metabolizing adenine triphosphates and stuff like that. Clap, clap. Thanks. I mean, it's... That's not as good a redemption story as I was once a bully and then I stopped bullying people. <laughs> but it's definitely like an interesting story because I was definitely a victim of kind of like... I don't know if this is around the world kind of like consistent themes, but there are a lot of mental health professionals in New Zealand who basically seek people out to use them as platforms for their career. So if a counsellor can kind of like work towards... Oh, welcome to the welcome to the channel, Dead Space Man. I'm sorry, I, I really don't have any kind of like membership perks available other than a single emoji. But like, thank you so much anyway. I hope you didn't give that to me just because of my story. But yeah, a, a lot of like counselors and psychiatrists they'll look at somebody as a as a paycheck, right? And if they can diagnose somebody with um, an illness that they hadn't worked with before, that can add to their repertoire of experience, even if it was a misdiagnosis and it was wrong. So many, th so many times I've been misdiagnosed. When I was eight years old, I got diagnosed with autism because I didn't really fit in with other kids and nobody had considered, oh, 
Maybe it's because he's the only kid in the school who doesn't really have his dad around much. <laughs> it's like, no one considered that. It was just like flat out autism. It's gotta be autism. What else could it be? It has to be autism. Okay, definitely can't do her one. Bugger. A little bit of a shame, actually. There's only one person that'll give us a quest for the agriculture, unless we kind of like really scour the place for NPC quests. I think we've already taken that lady's quest as well. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. You're genuine and authentic? Yeah, well, I try to be. Also, I've got memory issues, so I can't... <laughs> this is something I learned at a real young age, right? If you have memory issues, you can't lie, because then you'll forget the lie and you'll be caught out on it. Yes, please. I'll take that. <laughs> it's just... It's a, it's a consequence of, of form. <laughs> form meets function. What's this one? That is the one we already took from the lady. We still actually need that giant signpost, don't we? The one that we stick these bills on, which we don't really have. Same reason I come to this channel. What, the the genuine authenticity? Like, it's nice. I, I'm really sorry to hear that all of the other YouTubers you guys have encountered are kind of like a little bit a little bit fake or two-faced, though. I, I imagine that's like kind of like the trade-off, though, of being a content creator, just a famous content creator. Like, I'll get far enough on being on honest and genuine. But unless I'm all like, oh my god, do you guys just see that? We just fished up a red herring! Whoa! That is the rarest fish for the tear the- Like, unless I'm just Dorco at all times, I'm probably not gonna get to the like the million subscribers mark or anything like that. Like, definitely not. It's 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 just not gonna happen. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? The the YouTubers that are just a little bit too much to be consistently watching in the background on a second screen. I don't hang out on channels that aren't the same. Oh, that's kinda cool, actually. Yeah, pretty much you and Markiplier are one of the few genuine feeling people I watch right now. Ah, uh, that's, that's funny you say that, because one of the very few YouTubers I watch these days is still consistently Markiplier. And Sips. I like Sips. He doesn't really do a lot of YouTube content anymore, but he does uh, big VODs for live streams. And I feel like his content is uh, based. <laughs> it's not like, he's not like pushing an agenda. It's not like he's screaming and stuff every time he gets jump scared like that. But he... He's just based in everything that he talks about. He's got a couple of kids and he, he needs the money and that's that's pretty much it. You want to come hang out? Give him money. That's mm. as simple as that. Good guy. He also, he's really, really good at really boring games. Like, um, Zomboid. <laughs> I don't want to call it a boring game, but it's definitely one of those time investment games where you got to, you got to dump about 40 hours in there just to kind of learn the very bare minimum of mechanics so that you can survive longer than an hour. He's really good at games like that. So that's, that's who I watch in my spare time. It's got nothing to do with like genuine feelings or anything like that. He's just he's just a funny guy every now and then. It's nice that you guys uh, think of me so highly though. Long term or short term? You don't seem like you have memory issue at all? Oh no, I, I definitely have memory issues, but I, I am medicated. I t I'm, where the hell is it? Oh no, I've forgotten where I put my meds. Oh, how ironic. Yeah, I've, I've got these meds right here. Um, these kind of like stimulate uh, pathways. Uh, neurodes, I suppose. It kind of like reinforces neuroplasticity. So I, I take those every day. Sometimes I'll take like three a day if I'm having a really bad day. But I do have massive memory issues. I just have coping mechanisms. Mnemonic phrases and stuff like that. I am also exceptional. Like, I'm quite aware of it. I am exceptionally intelligent for the damage inside of my brain too. All right, so we need a seven weight cut tomato soup, which means we probably actually need to get ourselves a knife, right? That's probably the one thing we need, unless these have cooked. Okay, we definitely need to cook them, and I'm starting to think that we actually also need to put water in this. Okay, yeah, we need water in it. Gotcha. Now I understand. So we need to cut these up right here. All right, let's go back to the, um, let's, let's go back to the agriculture place. Okay, I don't know what they did to the Minecraft launcher, but it doesn't like me today. I know, right? Oh my god, the, <laughs> the struggles that I had with that thing when we first tried to play it. Although, it got to be said, I do prefer Java over Bedrock. Now that I have kind of like a little bit more experience past the 40 minutes of the launcher just crashing repeatedly. I think it's the 1.21 update because there are so many things that support 1.20. But 1.21... There are almost no mods that are updated for it, so I think it's really unstable. I, I don't think... I think people are waiting for Microsoft to kind of update it to maybe the next one. Where are our tokens at? 
We need lots of tokens. Hopefully they're not back at base. We need a knife. Where do we get the knife? It's got to be here, right? Ah, cleaver. Okay. 84 buckery booze. Good. <laughs> this is my third live visit. I think it was time to member up. Man, you are way, way... You're doing it way sooner than literally everybody else who's come to the channel. There's only one other member at the, at the moment, I'm, and I know her personally, which is quite funny. I figured you would. Yeah. I mean, it, like, Bedrock, this fax texture pack just being native into the store, that's really nice, and I quite like it for kind of, like, very, very basic playthroughs and such. It's also really, really easy to use skins in there. But now that I've created a custom skin, I'm kind of also getting used to the mechanics of all of the, the new stuff as well. I think Java is just the way to go. Where the hell do we stick our tokens? We didn't stick them in here, did we? No, we did not. Okay. Back, <laughs> back to base, I guess. I love how you say it doesn't look like I've got memory issues, but we've been going back and forth from the base. Like, I think this is our fifth trip <laughs> to get a cooking knife. <laughs> They're only 80 bucks. We should have one by now. It's pretty funny. I did, uh, by the way, I tried to install a shader pack. Um, I think it's called Complementary Shaders. Oh, no. Oh, no, we're good. Oh, no. Is the truck stuck? No. It's just pregnant. Okay, good. Yeah, I tried to get a few uh, shaders going, but they're not really taken very well. I think I actually need, like, some kind of mod loader, which is a little bit of a shame, because I don't, I don't want to play it on a mod loader just yet. I want to play it vanilla enough. Got a bowl right there, too. That's good to know. Right, where are we sticking the tokens? Because we do have tokens for this place. That is just money. That's our pipe cart. It's not in here. It's just a bowl. That's not helpful either. Booze! Booze! That's not good. <laughs> oh, no, we can buy that knife with money, can't we? All right, let's just bring this all the way over there. Because we're not going to buy anything else. Usually you need Optifine to run shaders. Yeah, Optifine has not been updated to 1.21. It is for 1.20. And as far as I know, there is one tutorial on YouTube that I watched this morning on how to actually update Optifine to 1.21. And unfortunately, um, it was behind a gigantic wall of, hey, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my Twitter, and all this crap. Uh, that this one YouTuber just artificially put in place, and I'm not motivated to do any of that because I don't even like the YouTuber. And then after uh, seeing him demand that I subscribe to all of his social media before he'll give me a link to um, someone else's mod, absolutely revolting. I watched your posts when they popped up, hardly ever caught lives. In your defense, you've been interacting, chat, listening to music, talking and whatever else. That is a good point, actually, uh, but I'm good at it. I'm good at all of those things. You're the exact same person and posts as live posts. Yeah, Cons consistency is key. I'm a consistent person. I love consistency. That's what I'm all about, baby. Besides, if you're always natural, you don't have to have to go through some kind of uh, giant paradigm shift in personality. It sets the tone for the channel as soon as people get here. It's quite nice. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's another like, like lying. I, I don't like lying and I'm not gonna lie to my audience about who I am just to get views. All right, we're gonna get lots and lots of tomatoes. We need uh, scales actually, cause we can't weigh these. I think we... Didn't we buy scales for this place last time we came here? Like, we can go back into town and get some. All right, let's leave those there. Do we get any scales? We should have. No. <laughs> no, we did not. Got some seeds here, though. That's pretty cool. So, are they still watered? Yes. Okay, the area of effect for watering is actually quite broad. So, we probably could just stagger these one by one. Hey, I like that. We'll do that. Why are tomatoes on the furnace? Uh, because I, I pulled the cooking pot off of the furnace and I didn't cut the tomatoes, nor did I put any... Uh, what are they called? Water. I didn't put any H2O inside of the uh, the pot. So I, I don't think it kind of like snapped to the bucket. All right, let's go ahead and we'll go back to the agriculture city. We'll get our money back, then we'll go and buy ourselves some scales because we are now doing quests. We, we got to do the quests. We don't really have a choice. It was here, wasn't it? Just over here. Yes, sirree! Here we go. Nice. Go ahead and dump this right over here. 
But yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to lie to my audience about who I am or what I'm doing or anything like that. If people don't like... Like, I came onto YouTube with this kind of, like, mindset that only one in six people will just like me as a person. Because I'm a, I'm a bit of a jackass, let's face it. Like, I'm emotionally articulate and I'm a... I, I try and be as, as good a person as I can. But at the end of the day, I am still a bit of a base jackass who just takes all of the bad dialogue choices in games. <laughs> And I don't really want to lie to anyone saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get the best ending in the in the game in this one playthrough." No, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing as an absolute jackass because people haven't seen that before, and I want every playthrough that I do on the channel to be something that no one has ever seen before, and no one ever does the the bad dialogue choices. So why not be an absolute dunce? Why are we here? We are here for scales, right over here. Okay, let's go ahead and dump that in there. Gonna get these scales. I hope this works, actually. I'm also going to leave that money there, because realistically, we're probably not going to use it back at the agriculture place. We've already got all of the beer necessities. And we're done. Okay. Okay, real good then. Let's go ahead and go all the way back. We'll start weighing out some bowls of soup. I don't know how we're actually going to stick it in this bowl, though. We need, like, a four kilo bowl of soup. Or maybe it's just four grams. Which is not really tomato soup. It's probably more like a... um. A fleck of tomato. Literally, literally a fleck of tomato skin inside of a, a bowl of water. Right. Let's take the scale right here and I'll stick it right beside this furnace. Oh, can't see that. Can't see that whatsoever. We should probably get some platforms, honestly. Let's move this over here. Yeah. Right there's probably good. And now we want to start chopping up these tomatoes, don't we? Let's weigh them. Make sure we're top chopping up enough. 18 kilos? Awesome. We can do two of the three quests. Ugh. Awesome. We can do two of the three quests that we just picked up. How many do we need, though? Just go ahead, pick these up, and dump them all on the floor like an absolute idiot. I'll put this bucket right here. We'll try and weigh out, like, four kilos of this stuff, right? right that's 1.31. I'll take this rolling one here. What's that? 2.63? Excellent. Is this four? Yes, that's four. So we only need to... Wait, what? Oops. <laughs> We only need to chop these three, and then we need to stick them into the soup, and we should have a quest finished. I don't know which one it's going to give us, though. So. Boom, boom, and boom. Nice! Uh, we want this in the cooking pot now, don't we? I know that it's going to be, like, covered in mud and a little bit disgusting, but I think it's absolutely fine. All right, let's try cook this. Let's see if this is how we do it. We probably need a, a bunch more of these uh, stoves now as well. I'm going to stand inside of the soup. Me flavored soup. I'm finishing Umbrella Academy tonight. Oh, that's, uh, people have told me that that's really good. They're not doing another season? Don't ever change then. If you blow, always stay a jackass and you'll not have a thing to worry about. Yeah, I'm going to stay a jackass. Don't worry. I'm always going to be a, I'm, I'm gonna, always going to be a jackass. Okay, I'm heating up the soup. Do we have to like dice it even further? I'm like standing in the soup. I, d I don't know. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's like... We gotta cut it, cut it again? No, it just halves it. What? Okay, so it halves these ones. We have got a cooking pot. We've got a cooking... Oh, perfect! Uh, is that whole thing done? Yes! Nice! Okay, so hopefully we can just use a bowl on this and not have to, you know, drop it into the... Can we do that? No, we've got to drop it into the bowl. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, thank the Lord that worked. Okay, so that's one bowl of four kilo soup. I'm going to go ahead and get the other what's my dingle that we needed. Where's the car? Over here. We'll get the quests and we'll see exactly what we need. So one of these is... That's too heavy. This one right here. An eight weight cut tomato. That's... Wait, an eight-weight cut tomato, not the soup. Wait a minute. Eight-weight cut tomato. Oh, no, he definitely wants the soup. Okay, gotcha. I was, I was thinking for a second there that the soup is kind of like the reward. Seven-weight cut tomato. Easy. Four-weight cut tomato. Okay, so Bastion Keep. Let's go ahead and just do some kind of like some orders. We'll do them one at a time because we've already got the four-weight. Let's go ahead and just drag this to the guy at Bastion Keep. And we should have one of these completely out of the way. 
Excellent! Hey, Instant, I'm currently watching you while my Chromebook is actively killing itself. I'm really sorry to hear that. I don't think I've ever had a piece of technology actively try and kill itself. I lied, actually. I did a Bachelor's of IT, and while I was doing that, I was programming an AI, and I forgot to give it the kind of, like, positive reinforcement. Hey, you've done well, ones and zeros. And once it realized that it had no purpose in life, it begged me to terminate it. It was very sad, actually. Very, very sad indeed. It's one guy in the river over here just kind of getting himself trench foot. Get to you, bro. Dead pixels all over the screen, and also the screen is constantly flashing. You can frame as bust as well. That sucks, man. You're probably going to be in the market for a new iPad. Ah, oh, well. When you change, it's when the audience turns on you. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I, I've seen that happen so many times. It's all... It's, there's a horn! I didn't know that. Nice! Okay, good. Our truck is horny. So, who is this guy? Is, is it this one here? Hello there, Thomas. Seven, wait, nope, that's not him. Hello there, sir. How are you? Would you like the soup right here? No, he wants a... He wants an emerald for free. How about no? No sounds pretty good, right? Okay, good. So, people up here as well. Where are you? Where are you, soup man? Is it this guy over here? Hello, sir. I have brought you some soup. There you go. Enjoy. Thank you for the soup. And the one dollar. Does this work? No! Oh, we're going to need like a bucket to put the soup in then. <laughs> That's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. There should be kind of like a food delivery tray in this game. We can just load them up with bowls of soup and stuff. Chromebook, not iPad. Also, I'm in school while this happens. Oh, that's rough. That's real rough. All I did was take it out of my bag. Maybe something uh, rubbed up against the screen. Because it sounds like you've got some damaged LEDs there. But there's not really a lot you can do about it. There's kind of an expensive fix. Usually like 100 bucks here in New Zealand to get a new screen on, a, on some kind of uh, tablet. iPads are way more expensive. Okay. Thank you very much for your opinion. I didn't ask for it. Oh, really? Oh, wait. Is this guy going to... Can we sell soup to this guy for... for tokens? Maybe we can. I'll commit that to memory. All right, we've got to come all the way in here to get our $1, which I almost didn't even see. Ooh. I have double casings. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Maybe it's a loose connector inside of the actual unit then. Bit of a shame, actually. It's it's a real shame. I've had a few tablets break on me as well. Not a hell of a lot that you can necessarily do about it. I think they're kind of destined to break eventually anyway. Actually, uh, if you're in school with a with an iPad or um, Chromebook, do you actually use it for kind of like school stuff? Because I, when I was young, right, we weren't even allowed to use our phones to Google information to make sure it was correct in class. That was just, it, it was something that we could just, like, not do. The teachers would get really, really insecure and then try and give me detention. Good thing I just stopped going. <laughs> How likely is the next live a horror game? It could be. It could be. I'm not entirely sure. I might do some Amnesia Custom Stories, just kind of like, in my spare time. I know I put a poll up and I put Amnesia Custom Stories as kind of like, the thing. The, the thing that you could uh, watch me do on Friday, but I might do them on... Um, on Wednesday as well. I have two cases for it, and it's not correctly displaying things, and the entire left side of the screen is just gone. Yeah, that definitely sounds like either a loose connection issue, or something's pressed on the screen a little bit too hard. Favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, that is a loaded question. But without thinking, Event Horizon. Easy. Yeah, just like a, a no-thought response, Event Horizon. I love that film so much. And there's only one. There's only one. It's not like a convoluted franchise, so... You're not like... There's no gatekeeping with the information, right? Because I know with Scream and Saw and stuff, you need to know this entire uh, wiki of information to be able to watch them. Well, I suppose you don't. But at that point, it all just becomes kind of like the torture porn that other people don't necessarily like the series for anymore. Got a bowl right here, too. Yes, we do. Google Docs and Google Gossip. That's pretty cool. The Attic is pretty fun. The one I put in the suggestions? Yeah, I'll probably play that one and uh, a, a craft of mine. I think that was another one, right? Loose connection, but the pixels have been overloaded and the black pixel circle is slowly expanding over my screen. Ooh, that actually does sound like damaged LEDs. I hate to say it. It's 
<laughs> Probably damaged LEDs. Uh, let's start bucketing up some tomatoes. We need seven weight, don't we? That is one, that's 2.8, perfect. It's right here. 4.4, good. This is 5.6, excellent. Oop. And that's 7.56. I'm actually, I'm gonna do the eight weight one first. Mm -hmm. We should probably go as heavy as we can, right? Yep. I could probably actually remove this one. Nope. I can remove one of the smaller ones so we can save some of the weight. 8.06, that is just over the mark, perfect. Let's go ahead, oh my God, seriously. <laughs> Why doesn't it snap to the bottom of the bucket? Maybe it's because it's on the scale. All right, let's go ahead and drop all of this in here. And then I'm going to cut them all individually. Yes, yes siree. And hopefully all of these are just going to kind of like blend into each other. And two more. Whoops. Okay, put that there. Cut it up. And is it blended into the others? No, but I'm pretty sure if we just like... Ah, it does just snap on. Perfect. Awesome. So this should be eight weight. It is eight weight. Excellent. I did not like the slapping noise of that hitting the... Hitting, hitting the top of the furnace. That's gross. No, I don't think I like the uh, sound of tomatoes. Okay, I was hoping that we could kind of like walk into the ocean. But it doesn't seem like we can. We have to manually drop this in every time we need some kind of liquid. Uh, let's put that on the boil right there. And we'll also get the tomatoes from the ground. Just over here. Let's drop that right there too. So that'll cook up. Do we want to kind of like build a house on the beach side here? I, th I think we probably actually do, don't we? We can get a nice like little kitchen going. Let's do that. I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get a cart for some building materials. My timetable is online. I'm not going to be able to check my LEDs die. That sucks, man. That sucks. We got a printed out piece of paper, which we was, uh, that was supposed to last for the entire year. That was supposed to be our timetable. Event Horizon was very good. Oh, I loved it so much. Mine is the original. The thing, yes! Oh, that is a, that's probably my second best. I love how at the end, also spoilers in case anybody, everyone who hasn't seen the thing, the original thing, not the crap remake from the mid 2010s, everyone cover your ears, right? I loved how right at the end, there was Jeff Bridges sitting next to his friend and neither of them knew whether or not the other one was the thing, but they just kind of knew that they were gonna die out there. So they just, they both, kind of sat there and thought, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> it's so cool, huh? That was that was such a good ending as well. That was kind of the kind of ending that sticks with you, like the uh, ending of Shudder. Everything's flashing even more. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry that that's happening. I'm... Uh, yeah, there's not... There's literally nothing that you can do about that, though. You're gonna have to take that to a technician. There's no, like, hack that kind of fixes uh, dead pixels or anything like that. I should know. I, I've studied IT formally for about two years. When did we bring our money with us? Where is our money? Because I want to buy a cart, and then want, I want to buy a bunch of homewares and such. I think that'll be a good a good thing to do. Now, how big do we want this house to be? Oh, there's nothing here. Probably want an agile cart because we'll be moving it around a bunch, and speed is not really something we're concerned about whatsoever. Yeah, uh, I'd say that The Thing is probably uh, Yint Set's all-time favourite horror. Like, not part of a franchise kind of all-time favourite horror. It's not showing the colour red. I'm just going to trash and get a new one. Smart. Uh, don't, like, throw it in the bin, though, because you'll want to migrate all of your data over, which you can do with, like, Samsung Smart Switch if you, if you use a Samsung or something like that. Okay, we need to buy the cart first <laughs> before we start building this house. And then we'll buy, build a nice kitchen. Frame is like entirely bust, barely connected. Yeah. Called it. Disconnected. Real shame. I'm sorry that's happening to you, my dude. You got the cash. Okay, let's drop that here. We'll buy this here cart. We'll throw money on top of this cart. And then we'll take this cart while facing this direction. And now we're going to take it over to the delicious, delicious store where we can buy some nice homewares. I think that'd be good. We'll put a bed in there. We'll, we'll make up a nice floor. We'll get some foundations as well. I don't think we'll get like a factory floor or anything like that. I think that's probably going to be overkill. But we should definitely get ourselves like floor for a house. House floor. Uh, let's get ourselves maybe two lots of these double wooden stairs. Good. And another one. 
Excellent. And we'll get some wooden floors because they are absolutely fantastic. Okay, so one... I think I'll make like a, a four by five. Three, four, five, six. So we'll need 25. Eight, nine, Business. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, whoops, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, good. And we probably want a couple of these wooden wall windows. I remember there is an easy way of kind of like placing these on the cart, but I don't remember what that specifically was. Huh? Let's also get the money off the cart before it kind of like, we bury it. Okay, we'll put it in this bucket right here so we know where it is. So we want, uh, we've got a four by five, don't we? So we want maybe two on each side, two windows on each side. One, two, three, and four. And then we want another one, two, three for the ends. And we're gonna get a single door on one of the ends where the windows are gonna go. And then we'll also get one in the center of the house. We'll get two of these doors in total. I'm not gonna do the roof just yet. We probably wanna plan that one out a little bit better than we kind of are now. Everything's looking okay, actually. Nice. The thing is my favorite, then Scream, then Child's Play. Scream, I, mm, I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with Scream because I have predicted every single Scream movie almost to a perfect level in the first 10 minutes of the starting sequence of it, including the TV show. I knew exactly who one of the killers were based on five minutes of it. I haven't even seen the TV show. I just saw one scene, that guy fallen off of the railing in the nightclub. And I thought, oh, the, the, the person who took the photo of that, she must have, he, sorry, he or she must have been there in case anyone hasn't seen it, must have actually been there in front of him, must have caused the death at least for, to get a photo that close instead of just hearing it. I realized that the TV show was being told by an unreliable narrator. That's, that's exactly what it ended up being like. And, uh, Unfortunately, it, it kind of ruined my love for the Scream franchise. I'm too clever. I'm too clever for my own good <laughs> when it comes to Scream. Uh, let's try and throw that over there. That's annoying. That's really annoying. Apparently, there was kind of like a way of turning that sideways. Okay, good. One. We're probably going to need maybe four of these. Three. Huh? And four, and then we're gonna need four of these ones. Huh? 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 Okay, one of these obviously fell off, which is why we can't put anything down. Uh, perfect. Good. And this one goes on next. One, and two, and three, and four, and four. Good. That one fell off, unfortunately. So did the other one. Man, this game is fiddly, isn't it? And put that one there. Okay, that should all be good. We need roofs now. And we probably need heaps of these ones. To be very specific, these roofs here. Okay, I don't know if that actually snapped onto the part, but I suppose we'll find out later, eh? Okay, four, five, six... Seven, eight. Oh, come off it. Eight. What are you doing? Okay, eight. I can't see now. Uh, nine, 10, 11. We need 20. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Twenty! It leaves you up to interpretation. It is genius, isn't it? Oh, the thing is really, really genius. I love movies that are open-ended. I love that so much. Actually, no. Um, I probably have to change my girlfriend, Yin Set's answer to a different one. Let's see if we have everything on here before we buy it all. We do. Thank the Lord. Ah, uh, what was it called? It was Black Christmas. Black Christmas is her favorite horror. Probably by a long shot. Wait, are you serious? I can't buy any of this? Are you taking the piss? Okay, there we go. Th that seems kind of low. I think some of these are going to despawn as soon as we 
pull it off of the lot. I've been taking care of a new baby chameleon. Stressful. That's so cool. I, I didn't realize that people could uh, could take care of chameleons. I thought they were kind of like self-sufficient. They're the ones that have the like the two fingers, right? The cute little two fingers. And they're really polite when they grab things. Haven't seen Black Christmas yet. Plan to check it out in the wintertime, though. It's not necessarily a Christmas film. It's just kind of like, it's 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 the time period that the film takes place in. But it's not, it's it's not specifically a Christmas film. It is really good, though. I gotta I gotta admit, it is really really good. I didn't necessarily like it, but I understand just how genius the actual film is. Okay, good. Because it kind of like it, it sets itself as a who done it. Oh, I shouldn't spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything. It's a whodunit. It's a whodunit film. Okay. So we just bought all of this homeware. We put our money into the back of the truck. Perfect. We probably actually need a couple of other little bits and bobs, like foundations and such too, don't we? Like maybe some of these. Might actually be a really good idea. Let's go ahead and just get some foundations. I mean, a house is only as strong as its, as its weakest foundation. God, I can't see anything now. We've made an absolute mess. Uh, let's not make, get these ones. Let's get these. These pillars. One pillar. Two pillars. Three pillars. I'm kind of planning out in my head how I'm going to build this house as well. Four pillars. And then another three for the deck. Yes, we're going to have a deck. Everybody, we're having a deck. I think this is three. And we're going to need seven of these here base foundations now because that's how many posts we're sticking the house on. Two three and four five and six and seven gorgeous that should be everything uh probably need to go back and get our money right how much is it i can't tell there's no way of knowing please where's my bill what about the stuff where they live oh i've never even heard of those okay they're definitely in the shop what are they like are they any good because I had a, a, a thing with a lot of my friends uh, a couple of years ago before everybody got too busy to be able to turn up for them. We had uh, horror movie nights. Essentially, about four, maybe five years ago, Yinset, my girlfriend, was not particularly good with horror. And uh, she kind of wanted to be a part of things that me and my best friend Carl were a part of, which is just like hyper analyzing horror movies and um, it, it, it just really enjoying the horror genre. You know, like, there's all the torture stuff, there's all the gore stuff. We completely look past that. We really like the subtext. Like, Men. Men was a phenomenal movie. I love that so, so, so much. Uh, every single one of my friends absolutely loathed it. And the reason for that was the birth scenes. And if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the movie, you might want to go watch it for yourself because it's a, it's a bit of a... A thing, but the whole movie is basically kind of like a psychoanalysis an analysis of um, the traumatized brain of someone who just survived an abusive relationship. And I'm not talking about physical abuse. I'm, ta I'm talking about m emotional and mental abuse, that kind of stuff, which is probably the truest horror of all. So I love that film. All my friends hated it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Yinset was kind of like, oh, I, I kind of want to be a part of things. So I, I showed her. One of the movies that ended up being one of two of the scariest films I've ever seen, which was Shutter. It's a Korean film, and the first half of it is kind of like a very generic ghost flick. And then the second half of it kicks up and then becomes like The Ring on crack. <laughs> so good. It's so, so good. But like, um... After that, like, I, I really threw her in the deep end when it came to horror as well. After that, uh, we started having these nights where Carl, her, and I, my best friend Carl, would kind of like get together, we'd uh, watch these movies, and we, we'd kind of like talk about them for the next week afterwards. And then I got more friends to start coming over to them. We got about eight people, I think, at our peak to, to come over every weekend and just watch a few, few horror flicks, and we'd all be talking about them all, all week as well. Kind of like a book club, but for, but for film nerds. Like Ice Nine Kills, after Ice Nine Kills was, um, was a, a book club. Okay, I'm going to chop all these tomatoes because I don't want them necessarily rolling away. But it's really, really good. Now everyone's too busy. We can't really do anything like that. Shatter or shattered? Shutter, like a camera. S-H-U-T-T-E-R. There is an English remake 
I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's not good. You definitely want to watch the original one because it's uh, it's it's definitely one of those horror films that really catches you off guard. It's more similar to like Gonjim Asylum or Grave Encounters, if you've seen those ones, than it actually is in the first half of the film that where they just give you the kind of like ghost story. Also, Gra Grave Encounters is probably one of the best uh, ghost films ever made. Uh, how much? How heavy is this? 5.9. We actually need 8. No, 7 for this next one. So we could probably get away with just doing one more tomato, right? They've probably grown by now. They've not grown by now. Who's? Oh, no. Oh, well. Uh, let's keep on growing all of our crops, I suppose. I think this is probably done, right? So we could probably fist this into a soup. Yes. Let's fist this into a soup right there. And now we want to go and find whoever want the... We ever wanted the cut tomatoes, right? Probably in the back of the ute. Where's the ute? Oh, there it is. We're also going to have to refill this bad boy because we haven't refilled it in a long time and it's probably running low on water. Shut up. Yeah, it's it's one of those films. It's, in ways, as scary as the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. But at the same time, it's its own little, like, bit of horror. Okay, is this going to work? We kind of need to, like, angle this around here. Almost. Hey, there we go. Excellent. P13, I think I seen it. 2008. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. It's got one of the most insidious endings that I think I have ever seen in horror. Okay. Now that we've done that, let's go all the way back to... I think we have to go back to the keep. Let's go back and we'll actually check the quest that they gave us, the quest list, because their location is written on it. I think it was this one, right? It's seven, no. This one right here, Grangefield. Where the hell is that? Oh, that's gotta be the agriculture town, right? That's pretty close to us. Okay, let's go ahead and all the way over here. We need to go back to Farmer's Town. All the way over here. Very good. But yeah, horror is one of those genres that is, it's so broad. It's kind of like getting into metal, right? Like what kind of metal do you listen to? Oh my God, what of the thousands of genres do you pick? There's so many. So I'd say probably the most clever horror movie I've ever seen that is also scary. Probably sinister. This guy is, I don't want to say he's hideous, but he's definitely too symmetrical to be normal. There you go. Enjoy your soup, you big bastard. Regretly broth, that is. I don't know what the hell he just said, but I'm pretty sure it was a slur. It says it's a Thai movie? That's the one. Yes, I always get them mixed up. Are those Korean movies and shows are good? Yes, they are, aren't they? Uh, Gonjim Asylum. That's definitely a Korean one. That one's good. Uh, Japanese, though. I'd say they, they probably have the best grip on horror. Regretly broth, that is. Like... It's kind of like a generalization. I think Japanese horror is, is probably the most consistent. All right, finally, we've got another token right here. Where do we put the other one? Is it not back here? Might be. If we just like reorganize the truck. Huh? It's not like floating, is it? Okay, I, I see nothing. That's a little bit of a shame. Sinister, where's the, where the dim guys in the pictures? Yes, yes. So, the thing I love so much about Sinister is that the antagonist, and this is very, very um, poorly elucidated on in the actual films themselves, the demon itself is Bagul, who is a Sumerian god of imagery. Bagul's thing is if you consumed media where there was a visual or any kind of artistic representation of Bagul, Bagul would be able to possess you, right? So watching... Sinister, the movie, allows Bagul to possess you, and because you watch Sinister, you know the potential of what Bagul can do? Isn't that cool? Isn't that so, so cool? It's like a, a, a very meta fourth wall, in a sense. But it's very, it, it is not touched on well in the films. It is just because I, I went out of my way to look up uh, Bagul as a god. He's a pagan god. Uh, dates back to Sumerian times. There's the other one. Okay. <laughs> Kind of funny that we take this money and we keep dropping it in the same place without really thinking about wanting to spending it, uh, wanting to spend it later. Right, I, it's 
honestly, a lot of people don't necessarily agree with me on horror because I tend to look past a lot of the actual horror stuff and I, I tend to look at specifically the story. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that is probably one of the scariest uh, stories, I think, out there. Because it, every time you watch it, you'll notice another little detail that's just a little bit more sinister than the last time you saw it. Like the, um, when the guy offers all of the uh, teenagers just a, a bag of barbecue right at the start. That, that's people. That's, that's people. Sinister should be illegal. It should, shouldn't it? Shadow people. Yes, it is very creepy. I think it's definitely outlawed in, in some social circles. All right, good. And, uh, the It remakes as well. Got to be said, they were phenomenal. Love those. Uh, a gigantic kind of like Lovecraftian story about what is essentially a fourth dimensional parasite. Like, Pennywise is not even... It's, it's, it's not even, it doesn't even come close to the size of a rabbit from the dimension he's from. He's literally a parasite, which is very cool. Very cool indeed. I want to be able to get to all the things at the bottom of this cart, but I can't see any of them because of how we've kind of stacked everything here, which is a little bit of a frustrating thing, but that's what it is, I suppose. All right, got a window here. Uh, let's build out this building. Maybe over here? Can we turn this sideways? Hopefully. Yes. All right, good. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll build it out from here, which means we probably have to move the giant compactor, which is fine. I'm happy to do so. We'll make a nice house here, and then we'll use that to cook. We won't just literally fish around in the dirt like a bunch of Neanderthals. I don't think that's going to be how we do this. I think we make a house. It's probably not going to take that long either, because we've already made a house. All right, this one goes there. Very nice. Uh, this will be five long, I think. Five panels. Three. I know it's on a little bit of a weird kind of angle. Four. And five. And I think the deck is just going to, like, look out that way. Across the, the beaches of Normandy. Uh, that can go there, too. I don't know if this is going to butt into, like... I should probably actually do this side first. Because I don't know if it's going to butt into that corner right there. We'll keep... Never-ending food supply? Yes, it is a never-ending food supply. I imagine that's kind of like, uh, you're talking about it with that one, right? Okay, good. So that is pretty equal and even. Let's go ahead and put all of these floors down so that they look fine. A little bit of a shame that the house has to be on such an annoying angle, but I don't really think there's a lot that we can do about it necessarily, so... What do you do? Put that there. Put this one here. Put this one... Right here at the end, and now I'm going to start filling out the middle, like so. Good. And this one right here. Let's go ahead and ram that one right there. Excellent. Ram another one. Almost filled it in. Almost got all these floors in. And that goes there. Probably got enough core stone to make a, uh, about like three machines now as well by this point. Okay, we've got two more floors, I think, if I'm mathing right. Oh no, we've got a spear. How many do we have? Oh, damn. We actually do have a bunch of these. Maybe we extend out this way one? Yeah, why not? Why not? What's the harm? What is the, What literally is the harm? Let's just do that. Put one there. Hopefully we've got five. And not like four. Three. Good. Four. Yes, we do have five. Excellent. And one more. And that is the last one. Love to see it. Love to see it. Love to see it. Nice! The demon. Oh, right, Bagul. Yes. Yes. I don't know if he's eating them necessarily, though. I, th I think it's just like his thing to collect souls. To use the to use to barter in the afterlife. Or, or something also really creepy like that. Uh, let's have a face now this away. And, like, we'll put it here, I think. Let's try for the steers. So we need the steers next, I think. There's one of them. Put this one right. Why can't we place this here? Wait, seriously? Why can't we? What? <laughs> what the hell, game? What are you talking about? What are you doing? Allow me this. Okay, good. Another staircase right here. I'm going to go ahead and just whack this one here. Got to do it sideways, apparently. Daft. Don't know why. Okay, uh, a couple of walls now. I'm going to put a window right beside this door because I like how it looks. Put that there. 
And we probably also need some flat walls too, don't we? I don't see any of the flat walls. Okay. So that is fine. I don't think these tomatoes are growing anymore, to be quite honest. Which maybe is not the best thing in the world. Okay. Let's go ahead and use our sickle. Because I'm pretty sure we need to use our sickle. Get rid of some of these. Yeah, it seems like that's going to be what we have to do. Okay, good. We've cleared those holes out. This one's also not growing for some reason. That's us. Maybe it's because we've already harvested it. Okay, so I think that maybe we should probably throw the tomatoes on the ground here. And then we should replant these ones. What if we can just, like, take the chopped tomatoes and stick them straight through the seed grinder? Let's see. Please? Okay. <laughs> Allow me this? Huh? Yes! Okay, great. Just crapped out some tomatoes. Love that. How many have we got? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. Oh, that was perfect. Nice! Okay, so we have exactly enough tomatoes. No one's asking for carrots, annoyingly. That's kind of like an issue that we are now experiencing, is that nobody is asking for carrots. And thus we uh, don't really have any other way of, you know, kind of getting money. So, a little bit of a damp fart, but I suppose it is what it is. Let's go ahead and whack this one, maybe here? Yeah, I like that. I like that lots. Let's whack that one there. This one can go over here, right in the corner. Or maybe it can go like here. Nice. Another door, which I want to stick on this side because it's going to lead in from the deck. Yes, very cash money. And now... Foundations! Nice. One goes there. One can go all the way over here too. Uh, like this maybe? Yes, perfect. I think the posts are probably actually just better than all the other things that we were thinking about sticking down. Let's get these out of the way. Honestly, these roof panels, they're getting a little bit annoying. Mainly because they're blocking us from doing everything. Good. And also a lot of roofs there. Not seeing a lot of posts. Okay, there's a post. It's good. We've uncovered them. Finally. Uh, we'll put this one right there. Nice little, nice little beachside house. I'm pretty fond of this, actually. Okay. And this one goes in that corner right there. Nice. Good, and we are going to stick in some foundations because we aren't absolute uh, criminals. Uh, this is weird. I can't put them down. All right, if you insist, game. Sure. Probably just uh, put these, like, there, right, on top of the posts. I kind of like how that looks, actually. Let's go ahead and just do that. Right there. I'll get another couple on the corners. One here. Good. And one more. This one. That's it. The rest are going to be thrown in the ocean because we don't ever want to see them again. Yuck. Okay, go ahead and do that. What else we got? We got some posts still, which we could probably stick in line with the building that we're building. Like, maybe not like that, but more like that. Good. Make it at least look stable. Especially when it's not. What the hell are we going to do this one? Uh... I think maybe we want it in that little square right there, and then we want it there. Good. Okay. And we're going to stick this one on the corner just over here. Right there. Excellent. I'm happy with this. Good, 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 good. So next is probably going to have to be these annoying ass little roof patterns. Okay, it's going to be 4x4. Four four. I'm actually going to move this over a little bit. Like here. This door can go right here. Nice! I'm going to watch Event Horizon tonight. Haven't seen it for like 25 years. My dude, you are going to love it. I love that film so, so much. It's beloved. It's a beloved film in my heart. Uh, let's go ahead and just move this one over a little bit more. And we've got lots of windows. I don't really think we've got lots and lots of other things. Maybe, like, this one can go here. And we'll just have, like, a double window looking out to the volcano, I think. That'd be nice. I think that's going to be good. 
Do we have another window? We do. Very cash money. All right, that can go right here. Nice. And I'm going to stick the last window on the far end here. Like, maybe here. Yeah, good. I'm happy with this. Do we get any walls? I don't think we got a single wall. <laughs> oh, maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't get a single wall. <laughs> That's a little embarrassing. Okay, I'll stick that one up there. This one as well. Can go on the other side here. Like, so. I know it looks like a lot of pieces are missing, and that is probably because a lot of pieces are missing. Okay, this one can go over in this corner here. Hopefully that's in line. It is not. Maybe here? Nope, still wrong. There. Okay, no. <laughs> that should be good. Okay, good. Ooh. Well, oh my god, why is the chair changing? What's going on? Okay, I did see a lot of messages just kind of like disappear. I don't know what just happened there. Someone probably just removed them all. Uh, let's go ahead and drop these all the way up here. And then we'll go ahead and grab these. Don't worry, my dude, they're all recorded. <laughs> Chat's recorded for the, uh, for the VODs. Okay, so that's half the roof on that side. Excellent. Let's go ahead and just start jamming these up here so it doesn't look like there's a bunch of bits floating around. That was strange. It was a little bit strange, wasn't it? Okay, uh, this one can go there. Nice. I'm going to move this closer, like so. And the reason I'm doing that is so that we can just grab and snap. Excellent. Good. And now flip those around so we can stick them on this side here. And drop it here. Nice. This is a very, very basic wooden cabin, by the way. I'm not doing anything fancy here. We're just basically making a cookout house. We probably could make a really fancy house out on the DLC area while we're waiting for the game to crash. But I don't really think that we need to do it out here just yet. We basically want to automate the agriculture so that we can get all of the seeds and stuff that we need for the King's Quest. And then we should be absolutely good to go forever. Is it nighttime or daytime? Let's find out. I just teabagged myself. Gorgeous. Jensen thought he was tripping. I was tripping. <laughs> the chat was moving. Okay, good. Ooh. Okay, the house looks like absolute ass. But I'm glad that we've done what we've done. Honestly. Uh, this can go on the other side. Like so. Boom, butt that in there. And we've got too many roofs, a little bit annoying. And we've got a couple more of these panels here. Probably don't need... You know, we actually do. We do need them. This one goes on the other side. And boom. Okay, the house is done. What do we think? Is it nice? It's nice kind of like open planned living. I think it's good. I, I think this is exact... Whoops, didn't want to pick that up. There we go, fixed it. You really did get a lot done. Now that's what I call a house right there. Here in New Zealand, you could probably buy this for around about 800,000 bucks at the moment. Because housing prices are really high. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take all these guild tokens. We're going to start getting the plants that we need for the King's Quest. Whenever we find the... That's not the bucket. Whenever we find the guild tokens. There they are. Good. Let's stick them in this bucket right here. And we want to check the quest for the really, really big one, don't we? What is this? So we need beetroot and broccoli. And then we should have kind of like access up top side into the king's castle. We can deliver that quest in, right? I feel like that's, that's going to be the thing. Okay. I know I'm manually walking over here like an absolute moron, but yeah, it's a nice walk sometimes. It's nice to get out into nature sometimes. Just get your hands off the keyboard. Put your phone away. Go for a nice walk. To this virtual gaming place. Okay. Uh, don't want to be there. We want to be over here, don't we? So let's see how much these cost first. They cost... 380... We don't have anywhere near enough. What? Oh my god, that is expensive. Oh, seed box. That's handy. Watering can. Uh, that's not handy, handy for us. Exclusively stores vegetables and seed bags. 
Plant pot. A portable pot for crops. Okay, we can grow pot. There is a vegetable dicer hook. Sprinkler hooks. Don't think... Can't afford any of this. Oh, here it is. This is the gigantic task board. This is what we needed. So I was looking for this for ages, and I'm kind of surprised that I'm only just finding it now. We are going to buy one of these, I think. Okay, let's take our bucket, and we'll drop it in here. Boop. We own it. Okay, let's manually walk back because we didn't bring our car. Awkward! 800k, that's triple. Definitely double. 475k is a big house here. It's insane in New Zealand, the housing prices. They fluctuate, like, the average house here in New Zealand will fluctuate across a decade between $300,000 and about $650,000. It's pretty crazy. The housing market uh, right here, no one's buying, which is pretty funny because Yen Siet is a home lender. That's how she earns her money. And at the moment, all she's getting right now, because all of the uh, housing prices are so high, is just really, really crap deals from brokers, which wastes her time to read because she knows that 99 and 100 of those will be uh, just like instant disqualification home loan applications uh, but I'm getting into like more boring chat right here why aren't these growing okay that one's just flat out not gonna grow without water so we can't stagger these we actually do need t-junctions the whole way along until we can afford that heinous 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 sprinkler system. Probably need another bucket too. Honestly, we should probably get a bucket for each crop. Uh, wow. How are we going to generate this amount of money then? Because we are entirely reliant on getting quests done. And we've got to wait for these to grow. Okay, I've got a strategy. I've got a strategy. We are going to buy a billion seed bags. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get some money, we're going to buy a billion seed bags, and then we're just going to absolutely pack out an entire line of this. Alright, where's our money? It's probably still at the, uh, other than the back of the uterus. Still at the, um, housing store. I suppose we're going to find out soon, huh? That's diabolical corruption firm on price. Yeah, it is. It is very diabolical, isn't it? But, you know, such is life. Where there's a, where there's a will, there's an exploit. Yeah, I think we will just kind of like pack out a gigantic line of these because it seems like we're going to need heaps and heaps of the vegetables regardless. There's nothing in here. Probably migrate all of our cooking stuff into that room there now. Just before we kind of forget about it. Ah, this is nice. This is a nice little house, isn't it? Let's have it facing out kind of like the, the window right here so we can look out at the volcano when we crouch every single time. Very good, very good. Uh, can't change that, unfortunately. Going to move the scales inside too, so we know the weight. Probably need to get a construction hammer. Uh, let's put that there. Yeah, we definitely need a construction hammer of some sort. We need lots of buckets, actually. We, don't, we need a bunch of little things. So I'll get a few of these T-pipes set up, and then we'll go and we'll buy all of the excess seeds that we need. I think that's going to be how we do this, to be honest. I did already, let's get the uh, pipes kind of like over here as well. I did already try to kind of like set up an automating, an automated irrigation system, but it didn't really do anything. So I don't understand the logic behind it. One there, one there. Uh, let's try the far end now, if we can. Yep, right there. And this one goes there. Very good. Ah. Right there and right there. Nice. So that's uh, quite a bit of water right here. Honestly, we probably actually need less water pressure because they're at the rate that it's coming out. It's not amazing on the frames. All right, drop all of this out here too. Go ahead and dump that and one more right here. Boom. Good. Now we got to go through the arduous task of finding exactly where the water drops are dropping and we got to shovel them. We could probably do the in-betweens like we've been doing everywhere else as well. That seems to actually function. All right, let's trail it all out. Where are we looking? Okay, there's one right here. And 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 there's another right here. Good. And there's another right... I'll see. Here, I think. Yep. And another right here. And another right here. And another right here. And another right here. There? 
Oh. Weird. Okay. Uh, there. And also there. Good. Good, good, good. One there. One here. And one. I know it doesn't look straight while we're doing it, but I think it's because of the field of view. One there. One there. I do want them all straight because I'm neurotic. Perfect. There. And one there. How straight is that? That is pretty damn good, actually. Let's start just shoveling in between them now. One there. One here. And this line here, that's going to be tomatoes. The second one right here. Oh, no. Have I cocked up this line? A little bit. Oh, well. <laughs> Such is life. Go ahead. Drop that one there. This one can go here. Uh, that's not straight. One there. Excellent. And we're going to stick one here. And one here. I think maybe if we just buy 30,000, like a house's worth of carrots, we'll never run out. In fact, we're not going to run out now because no one's asking for carrots. But when they do, oh, we'll corner that market. Uh, let's go ahead and just kind of like fill out these ones here too. One there. One there. And one there. Probably want to get this one too. And that right there. Good. One here. And one right there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. We do have some tomato seeds. Let's plant these before we go and double down on buying more. Excellent. Okay, so now let's get our bucket and we'll go back to the agriculture channel. Where the hell do we stick our bucket? It's not already in the back of the ute, is it? It's got to be. It's got to be in the back of the ute. All right. Good. I'm just going to jump in because uh, we can kind of like zoom in to see. Yep, it's definitely in the back. Where's our money? It's back at the... Uh, store. Okay, so we'll go to the city first, and I'm going to buy a building hammer, and then we're going to go to the agriculture town. We're going to get lots and lots of seeds. I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so through here, I think we left it at the giant ribs store, which should be selling these hammers, right? In here? No. It's got to be in the homeware store then. Which we have to move it from. Let's go ahead, grab this. 237,000 buckery booze. Fine, I'll take that. And go ahead, stick it in here. I'm pretty sure there's a building hammer here. Yep, there it is. Good. So we can kind of like place down our house so that we don't need to lift up any floorboards or anything like that accidentally by clicking. We probably also want to get ourselves a bunch of the stoves too, don't we? And probably even a billion bowls. Maybe. Have you ever listened to the Chuck Pel Palahniuk stories? No, I've never heard of that. What is that? I've never heard of it. That's not um Saul Goodman's brother, is it? I watched that. That was really that was a really really good TV show. Okay, I'm gonna come around here because I know that Grangeville, as it's called, is just around this corner, and I'm gonna take this hill right here instead of the obvious road because I am. A guy that takes the path of most resistance almost every single time. I've got a grocer over here. We could probably bring a tomato and see if he'll, like... If he'll actually give us... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna grab a tomato, and then we're gonna bring it to him and see if we can't get, like, guild tokens for him. Because then we won't be entirely dependent on quests, which is, um, annoying. Because not every NPC has a quest for this. And we have... Basically mastered the prospecting guild. We, we don't need any more tokens for that. Okay, I'm going to walk all the way back. I'm pretty sure we've got a few tomatoes just kind of lying around, don't we? Oh. Nice, that'll do. <laughs> I'll just take that freshly grown tomato right there. Gorgeous. He's written a ton of stories. Is the guy who wrote Fight Club. Oh, that was such a good film as well. That was clever. The ending for that was really, really clever. That's big on my recommendations list. It blew Yinsiet's mind when I made her watch that. Because she thought it was just going to be kind of like, you know, um, a coming of age story of this guy kind of like gaining responsibilities and not wanting to be an absolute dirtbag anymore. But then, you know, the giant mass scale terrorism stuff. <laughs> Crusher. Okay, we got six. What are these? Are these guild token coins? 
Which kind of coins are these? No, they're just garbage base game currency. So we can't sell anything and get any of the nice currency here. That's really obnoxious, actually. So we're going to have to do so many quests that allow us to save up to be able to get... Why is a sprinkler two, sprinkler two and a half grand? That would be 40 quests at 50 bucks each. That's insane. The game can't actually expect us to do that, kid. Can it? Surely not. All right. We're going to grab a heap of these seeds now. I'm going to fill a bucket with them. Uh, I'm not really too interested in the carrot seeds, but tomato seeds, definitely. I think this is good, right? Damn it! Oh, they don't snap into the bucket. Oh, I hate that so much. That's really obnoxious. Oh, they do kind of stack onto each other, though. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and buy that. Wait, can we only buy, like, one at a time? What if we stack this one on? Oh, we're going to only do one. Oh, no, they do stack on top of each other. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and put this in the back of the car because we need lots of tomatoes. Probably need to get, like, maybe 10 bags of carrot seeds as well. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's written a ton of stories. There's a story about a carrot, does he? That's oh, we didn't pay for it. That's clumsy of me. Why am I holding this hammer? I did not pick that up. Hey, Yinsen, by the way, that feeling I've been having has literally gotten insanely worse today. Now I'm just too bored to want to do anything. You gotta motivate yourself. Unfortunately, boredom is one of those things that you need to break the habit of. There's not really any way around it, unfortunately. I can't give you any advice whatsoever on it. It kind of sucks, but, you know, there's not really a lot to do about it other than to go out and motivate yourself. Like, it does suck. Um, there is a word for it. It's called anhedonia. A H, no. A N H E. D-O-N-I-A. If you Google it, you might actually find that that is exactly what you're feeling. Either that or Lapel de Vita. <laughs> Hopefully not that one, to be quite honest. All my French people in chat will know. Got a Lapel de Vita, huh? Win Lapel de Vita? Ha ha! Wee wee! Wee! Okay, we'll plant all of these tomato seeds. Weird that these aren't watering. Are all of them not going to water? I mean, it's going to fix the issue as soon as we get the sprinklers, if we ever do get to that point. Okay, that's all of the tomato seeds done. I'm just going to leave them here on the floor as well. I've not been wanting to go to martial arts class, which is something I was wanting to do to keep my energy up. Yeah, you got to keep on doing it. You, you, you just got to power through it. What kind of martial arts are you learning? Just out of interest. Okay, do that, do that, do that. Because I've done a lot of martial arts in my time. Just basics? Uh, do your classes have a name? Minimum basics? What? For martial arts? Okay, let's throw that there. I'm not going to dox myself. You're not going to dox yourself if you tell people what kind of martial arts you're learning. That, that, that's probably a little bit too paranoid. It only has one area, the place. Yeah, but the entire world has uh, multiple places and you haven't told anybody where you're from <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm probably going to get all these carrots out of the ground now. And we're also going to take our bed inside... Then we're going to use the building hammer to kind of, like, solidify everything that we've got here. I'm going to move this bed just over here so we can sleep with our head inside of the wall right there. Very nice. Now, where was that building hammer? Back at the truck, right? I'm just learning mixed stuff. Is that, uh... It, oh, well, okay. If you, if you don't want to say, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but I, I definitely have a very, very long-term vested interest in martial arts. The last one I was learning was Sistema. God, that is so much fun. It's Russian, so uh, it might be cancel worthy. But <laughs> hopefully no one cancels me. Uh, it's it's a Russian martial art. The Spetsnaz learned it. It is basically the efficiency of biomechanics. So when you are doing like 
uh, wrist locks and lock flow and leg locks and stuff like that. Sistema has kind of mastered just how effectively you can do that before you can move on to the next person and take them out. Because uh, what I kind of like started on with my journey was Diamondback a Screamer, which is kind of like Kali, but with um, very fancy footwork. And when it came down to it, Diamondback a Screamer is literally the martial arts uh, of choice of people who want to move through a crowd of people as fast as is humanly possible. That's why it was made. Uh, it's very, very good at that. So there's quite a lot of like... Um, I don't want to say, like, uh, there's a lot of striking, but there's a difference between a fist strike, which is a cutting weapon, and a palm strike. And the the Diamondback Sistema that I learned was very lock and open palm strike heavy. So, you know, someone throws a left at you. You could um, slip, push to the side, and then throw a hand upwards under their chin. And that person, in half a second... Down for the count, probably knocked unconscious, not going to get up for a while. You can move on to the next person who's attacking you. So um, you can very easily take care of uh, four or five people across 10 seconds. I don't really pay attention to what it is, but it's basically just a bunch of move from other arts. Sounds like uh, Krav Maga to me. Yeah, how fast can you get the black belt? Because Krav Maga is kind of famous for getting the black belt in two weeks, which is... A <laughs> I wouldn't really consider that to be a martial art, but... You know, a lot of people really swear by it. I don't pay attention enough to know what the actual art is. I don't really think there is any specific art at the class. I'm just doing to stay energized. Oh, is it just like a self-defense class? Because those are pretty common. I really wish the area I lived around was actually pretty n and nice. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame, right? If I'm walking there, I'm going to get stopped by the jerky Gen F Alpha friends I have. It'd probably just annoy me if I tried to walk. Krav Maga. Krav Maga is kind of sick. No, it's not. It's, it's literally worthless unless you are um, aggressing against... You, okay, so with Krav Maga, you not only have to be the aggressor, but you have to be the only one in the fight that's actually willing to fight. Krav Maga was put together to best restrain unarmed women and children, right? Because if they were men, in Krav Maga, you would just shoot them, right? Because in Krav Maga, you have a gun. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of dependent on that. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of Krav Maga at all. And it only takes two weeks to get a black belt, which is revolting. Um, even Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, that takes years. And that's not even really a, an effective martial art for fighting. It's, you gotta, it, it's a tournament style, so it doesn't really, you know, function in a fight. You just When, when someone goes to ground in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you walk away. That's it. They can't get up. Otherwise, they, they lose that, that advantage that they have. They can't get up off the ground. That is the point of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Like, I've done a lot of Japanese jiu-jitsu. That is rough. That is nasty. That's basically, if you go down on the ground, you are probably in a large-scale battle where everyone around you has a melee weapon, and the last place you want to be is on the ground. Um, so the whole point of uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu is to pull someone down onto the ground uh, take their weapon, kill them with it, and then get back up onto your feet. So, you know, even the point of the original jujitsu is to get off the ground, uh, which a lot of the kind of tournament style just loses a lot of. But yeah, if you want to learn some decent martial arts, Kali. Kali is absolutely phenomenal. That is dexterity to a max. You will never have to learn how to, like, uh, lift someone. You won't have to be strong or anything like that, or even Wing Chun. Very, very good. I can't stop thinking of Jujitsu Kaisen when I heard the word Jujitsu. The JKK, JJK brain rot runs deep. I, I've never seen it. That's an anime, isn't it? Wing Chun? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Wing Chun. Wing Chun is really fun to watch. Wing Chun's actually, it's got a really, really funny, like, backstory. Because um, you'll see a lot of people, when they do Wing Chun, uh, they won't, like, they won't stand there with the normal stance. They'll lean back, and they'll put their hands forward. And the reason for that is there was a very, very famous Wing Chun master who had very poor eyesight, so he needed to lean back to give him the extra kind of space to be able to react to everything in front of him. He was lethal. He was very lethal, like Ip Man level of lethal. But this guy, he had uh, bad eyes, so everybody who learned under him learned to, like, lean back, and none of them had to do it. Really funny. Jujutsu Kaisen is a great anime. Early on in the series, it was a really cool fight. I might give it a go. I don't watch uh, anime whatsoever. Uh, my best friend watches a lot of anime. He watches it every day. I was thinking of starting with Attack on Titan, though. 
What animes do I watch? I, I don't. I watched the Dragon's Dogma anime on Netflix. That was really good. I know a lot of people said it sucked, but um, quite frankly, I don't think any of those people actually played the game whatsoever. Because uh, it was basically, it, it really exemplified the whole point of the Dragon's Dogma games, which is that life is just a complete cycle and it doesn't really matter what you do. You just got to enjoy the journey rather than the destination. Have you seen the official Devil My... Sorry, the Devil My what? Devil My Cat? Devil My Cry. No, I have not. No, I haven't. If you give me some, like, good animes, I'll get to them when I have free time. But the only free time I have these days is about half an hour to brush my teeth and get into bed. <laughs> Real shame. All right, our tomatoes have finally grown. Thank the Lord. Some of them not grown so much, unfortunately. But we've, we've got a few. We need quests now. Oh, the agriculture in this game is such a pain. This is bad. Honestly... As much as I love the game, this agriculture patch is a bad, bad mechanic. Like, the agriculture itself is fine, but there's no way of, like, kind of automating the growth of it, which is a pain in the ass. And you also have to manually seek out all of these quests, too, which kind of sucks. It, it kind of sucks real bad dog balls, if you know what I mean. I've got to put the O. Devil May Cry. Yeah, yeah, I've played the games. I've played just about all of the games. I wasn't uh, terribly big on them, though. Uh, to be quite fair, I wasn't massive on it. It could have been a really, really fun game, but I think it was kind of, like, a little bit tied down by, you know, the insistence on kind of Tekken-style button combinations in a, in a world that didn't really blend well with Tekken-style button combinations. And also time limits. Time limits just piss me off to no end. Every, every time. I made a nice short anime of it. Okay. It's 12 episodes. Oh! If you hear somebody tell you to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, <laughs> please do not watch it. Do not watch it. Well, uh, uh, my best friend Carl, who I'm living with, loved it. You'll become the Zest Lord if you watch it. Yeah, it wasn't for me. I watched him watch it. It wasn't for me. Him and his sister loved it. They, they, they absolutely loved it so much that it basically consumed their entire lives. Uh, they bought, like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure bedding, and uh, they started, like, um, buying all of the... All of those mugs with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on it, and they always sucked on those lollipops that that guy had in that meme. I'm totally joking, by the way. That is overkill. Betting? No, I'm totally kidding. I don't even know if that exists. <laughs> Probably does, though, with the commercial success of it. Why are we here? Why did we come here? There was a reason. Quests. No quests here. Okay, let's try Grangeville. Chances are there's going to be some quests there for the things that we need. Unfortunately, I I think we're the game is just too saturated with the mining quests, which we it's literally a waste of our time to even look twice at. So there's no shot we'll be doing any of the mining quests again, except for the king's one, which we can't access until we do a billion little bits of agriculture here. All right, nothing in Grangeville. That's a shame. Speedwagon is the only body pillow you can buy. Speedwagon is the only daddy that is actually decent. What the hell does that mean? Speedwagon was a drug when I was when I was young. <laughs> what do you mean by daddy? I bet a Yinsen body pillow would do well. Maybe that'll be the first merch I put out. A gigantic Yinsen body pillow. And I'll just put a couple of like really uncomfortable lumps where all the muscles are. So that it's like, you get the actual experience of lying on Yinsen. Because I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the tits. And it's uh, it looks nice, but <laughs> it's not nice to touch. <laughs> Just too solid. That would beat any JoJo character. <laughs> a body pillow. Oh, yeah. If I was in a body pillow, it would be so lumpy and uncomfortable. I don't think it would sell for any reason other than kind of like memes. Okay, we got to go all the way back to the keep now for the uh, for the quests, which is not amazing. This is probably too far to be travelling, honestly. For literally anything. All right, there it is. I see the keep just over yonder's bread. Let's go ahead and jump over this Dukes of Hazzard style. Or we could fall into the reservoir right here. That's also very cash money. Sure, let's do that. Okay, let's get up here and through here. I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm just parkouring through trees. 
It was a strategy puzzle game, and now it's Assassin's Creed 3. Connor always skinned every animal he killed. Desynchronized. You lost. Basically, Assassin's Creed 3 in a nutshell. The target is getting away. Connor always skinned every animal he killed. <laughs> the combination no one ever wants to hear in their game. Okay, good. Uh, I think we may be a little bit stuck here. No, I we've got a little bit of a path through here. If I can kind of like <laughs> glitch my way through these trees. Oh, yeah. Nice. Got it. Excellent. Okay, I'm parkouring in the truck. Crazy. Okay. Now we want to find uh, just huge, huge resource yield of soup, don't we? For the quests. Hello there, sir. 75 gold for a... That's on him. That guy sucks. There's a guy in here, isn't he? Hello? Uber delivery? Nope. Oh, we do have one of these artifacts in here. That's pretty cool. Still need another three. Haven't found any others. I'm pretty sure there is one at the mill sack with a... I don't know just how, like, far through it's actually going to be, though. Okay, still checking for quests. Hey there. Yeah, hey. A uh, little bit of a pain in the ass, actually, isn't this? Yeah, I don't really see a lot of... No one here has any quests. We also don't have a... We haven't done any fishing in this game, either. I hope there's not going to be, like, a fish soup that we can make and sell and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and dip out of here. Let's just bring up a tab on the screen right here. We're going to go on bridge pour. Bridge pour. We're going on the bridge pour. Good. And we want to go ahead and take a look at probably guidebook? Items, towns, dig sites. Not really anything useful here. Nice helm. Nope, there's no documentation here on growing things. <coughs> ah, that's awful. Okay, what if we just like... Uh, tomato. What if we search for it? Oh, perfect. Good. What the hell? What, why is... What are the spawn chances for tomato? These are... None of these are tomatoes! These, none of these are even vegetables! Where to sell tomato? Okay, fishing guild grocer. He only gives you normal money. I'm gonna bring up all of these guys, see if there's one that maybe will give us proper... Proper money. What is this? Valuable. Okay. So we can sell a lot of stuff to him. For hydro coins, okay, useless. Hydro coins, useless. Hydro coins, useless. Hydro coins, useless. Right! That's not good. Hydro Uh, what is it? Farming guild tokens. So the wiki does not tell us literally anything. What else have we got? They might have just realized that more show up. Oh, so this is one of those over time things. Quests are random, so sometimes you just have to clear out the other ones to force new ones to spawn. Oh no! No, it's RNG dependent! I hate that so much! Oh no! Oh! No! RNG in a game like this for the quests? Why? What crack were they smoking? There just needs to be one store that just gives you like a one one hundredth of what you get in hydro coins for the vegetables, right? Because then you could ramp up production and scale without having to fiddle around with all of these stupid little quests. Okay, so we're not going to be doing the king's quest then yet. I'm going to have to like play this in my spare time, I think, and just oh do all of the agriculture off screen because that's going to... I can easily see that taking like 20 or 30 hours just to get enough to get to the next tier of vegetable. Oh, that's gonna suck. All right, we're going back to Ice Helm. We've, uh, we've hit a wall, we've hit a wall and we can't do it in the next like few sessions whatsoever. Even if we played all day, like we probably wouldn't be able to do this in the next few sessions because chances are the quests won't even turn up. Please make a Jensen body pillow. Uh, do we like the idea of me just filling it with gravel, sand and rocks? 
Because that's, uh, that, that, that's pretty much what I feel like. It's basically just gravel, sand, and rocks. But also squishy. Okay, nothing in there we want to change. Let's just go ahead and pack out as many of these drills in the dungeon as we possibly can. Then we might think about... I don't know, creating some kind of plan for the agriculture. Because it seems like the developers require it to be necessary to beat the game. Which I do not like whatsoever. That is just brain dead. It's, that's a stupid decision. What the hell is this? T2 rake? Nope. Run that down in the hole. Bye bye. With the rest of the tools. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah, no, don't worry. I'm holding up. Okay, I'll run along here. Everything's fine, right? Yes, good. You can make the background for the body pillow a bunch of mustaches. Or I could just, like, print myself on the entire body pillow with just, like, an enormous face stretched out to fit across the pillow. <laughs> Turn my entire likeness into a sausage. <laughs> okay. Four, four. And we'll take these upstairs. Now, how the hell does this always happen? Oh, is it because they're, like, falling on the edge of this? Maybe we need, like, a funnel there. How much have we got? 890! Whoa! That's heaps! Okay, we'll go up top. We'll take the course stone with us as well. If it, it would be insane. I'd buy it if it existed. It'd be expensive. It would not be cheap for me to ship rocks and gravel overseas, even if it was in a pretty package. <laughs> you know, if you do actually want to learn um, martial arts, I do have a big leather punching bag, and I've got really good advice for anyone who wants to kind of like toughen up their hands. Fill it with, like, clay and sand. Like, dry clay, powdered clay, and sand. And your knuckles will toughen up so fast. It's unbelievable how well it works. Okay, good. And I'm down. Good. And now we want to go ahead and drop the cloudium into this bucket so we can take it up there. Don't know why I took the bucket with us. We could have just literally taken the cloudium up. It's also a real shame that there's no, like, you can't craft a... An elevator or anything in there that's also a bit of an under an oversight i would say like that'd be super handy just removing all of the transit going all the way because what you're looking at right now is end game this is literally end game walking up these stairs is uh the intent of the end game of this game you're supposed to just do this repeatedly over and over and over again to generate more resources so that it can enable you to keep on coming up here and using this one machine We've also uh, really min-maxed the amount of resources that we're using too. Okay, good. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this down here. I don't know if we can craft a bunch of these, but I will do my best and try. Okay, good. And up we go. Excellent. Can we make another? Huh? No. No, we cannot. All right, we got one. That's fine. It's probably the Cloudium. The Cloudium is probably actually the choke at this point. Okay, I'll jump over here. Now we can set this bad boy up right over here. Maybe facing out this way so that we don't really need to look at anything. Or put anything down other than a pipe. Okay, good. That should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. No, shovel! Stop! <laughs> that was close. Right. We need some tea pipes. One right here. Wunderbar. Let's turn this around like so. And it's good. Alright, they're all pumping out resources. Whew. It's kind of funny how your body can hurt yourself to become stronger. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Adaptations. It's literally like gaining strength stats after killing or attacking something. Iron Fist is basically strength stat maxing up, but the side quests are harsh. And now, the, the reason I say fill it with clay and sand is because when you want to deliver a punch, uh, there's two knuckles that really kind of uh, shine through. And you can see it on my hands really, really well. You want these two to be incredibly sharp because a punch is essentially a cutting weapon. You want to deal uh, contusions. No. Lacerations. Crush cuts. Contusion is just a bruise. Okay, there is literally nothing else we can do here. There's nothing that we can do with the agriculture because we are dependent on RNG, so we can't wait for that. I think, honestly, we're probably at a point at which <laughs> we can't really do anything now. We've, we've probably... Gotten to the end game, right? Because ideally, we'd want to be able to get to the 
King, who is being blocked by two people, one of which we did the quest for very quickly. We made him a sword. We made him two swords, actually, and he only accepted one of them, hilariously. The second lady needs a soup with 300 kilos of two high-tier vegetables in them, which, quite frankly, is just obnoxious. Especially since everything is randomly generated in the quests, in the agriculture quests. There needs to be a patch that just adds a single vendor that allows you to sell all of your uh, vegetables for a one hundredth of its value in the farming guild coins, right? Bro, my kitty is on top of the stack of boxes like Batman. She's sitting there like Gotham needs her. Well, maybe Gotham does need her. Had you considered that? She acts like she's the boss and it's insane. Yeah, we've got a black cat here too. He's got black cat energy. You know, everything is his. Every time I like, I go into my bedroom, he's like curled up on my bed, just sleeping. And sometimes I go in there to um, wash the bedding. And he literally screams when we lift him up and just put him on the floor. Yeah, I got, I got a black kitty. I got a black kitty. His name's Neo. He's an absolute dunce as well. <laughs> he's... Like, he's a smart cat, but he's probably... He makes the stupidest decisions that I've ever seen. He came home uh, last night with a giant burn on his forehead and all of his fur missing across his face. I don't know why. First time I've ever seen that. My house is filled up with other grown-up cats. Oh, I'm not jealous. That was that was the house I grew up in as well. My mum uh, my mum hoarded cats. We had lots and lots of cats growing up. She's got, like, I think... Tw 12 or 14 cats at this point. She's not a crazy cat lady. She just ran an SPCA and... Um, they couldn't, they couldn't foster the, the animals for long enough. 14. Yeah, 14. She almost had 20 at one point. It was pretty crazy. A couple of years ago. But yeah, she, she managed an SPCA. And uh, unfortunately, there's, there's only so much room that an SPCA can accommodate. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this. Oh, I can't drop that there. Because the floors are in the way. That's weird. All right, fine. Up here it goes. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so the workshop is all basically done and dusted. Why are all these bits of iron falling out? Cease. Okay, there's also a bit of gold right here that hasn't been melted down either. There's nothing we can do. There is literally nothing that we can do here. I think that we may be in a bit of a poor spot. We could probably go and start fiddling around in the other mining facilities and see if we can't find the other artifacts. We haven't even gone through like an eighth of this, by the way. We just kind of mined out enough. Man, these nukes. There needs to be like a gigantic clear all dirt chunks or clear half dirt chunks from this area kind of utility because it doesn't seem like there is. You know, it'd be funny if the exploding head emoji was just a bunch of brains flying out instead of confetti. <laughs> I think what in that single sentence, you've also just explained why there's no brains flying out. Can't wait till emo emoji gore before GTA 6. Oh, is that actually happening? I thought that was just like a hoax. I thought they put out GTA 6 because it looked like GTA 5 with just a very simple reshader pack. Maybe it is actually a thing. I mean, I... I probably shouldn't have just, like, looked at Rockstar's Twitter and been all like, oh, that's a hoax. But I don't know why, but that was my immediate response. Also, there's not really a lot that I can do here. Not a lot that I can do. We're pretty much at a choke point at this point. Have you watched Madness Combat? I've never heard of it. What is Madness Combat? A simple characters with blood, bloody fights. I love it. It screams old man animation ages. Oh, it's an animation, right? Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. I'm more of a um a real violence kind of guy. Not like watching street fights and stuff like that. Just break out on Live Leak or in. Don't go on Live Leak. Uh, that, that, that's a bad website. Don't go on Live Leak whatsoever. But like um John Wick, that was my jam. I love that so much. Starts out with two people getting mad over who can use a boombox next to a tree. And then at the end of the episode, almost everyone is dead. Yeah, don't go to Live Leak. Live Leak is um, kind of like... Live Leak is now what people thought that 4chan was 10 years ago. Honestly. You know, people who had never been on 4chan before and just kind of like 
listen to all the stories about 4chan. We're done here. There is literally nothing else that we can do. We probably have to start the DLC now, right? Okay. Let's go. Let's start the DLC. Let's do that. Because I am now massively disheartened by the agriculture, knowing just how crap and badly implemented it is. I was getting a bit suspicious as well, because it seemed like... It seemed really well fleshed out for a free update, and it just ended up being a, a, a bit of a damp fart, it seems. And it's now stopping us. Like, it's physically putting a sandbag in the way of us beating the game. A Delta Traveler? No, 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 not now. That's either going to be... It's probably going to be a Friday game if it is voted for it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be playing all the games that I've already started, that I've already said I'd finish. But kind of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday's just going to be Minecraft days, I think. I think I've, I've decided it's, it's just going to be flat Minecraft days. There's going to be lots of them as well. There's going to be lots and lots of Minecraft. Scott's World has put together a gigantic list of things to do in there, which I'm pretty excited to see, actually. And then, after we do, like, enough of that in kind of, like, vanilla hardcore, we're going to move over to modern Minecraft, and I'll start opening up lobbies for other people as well. Okay. Good. We're on our way to Volcalidus. Mantis Combat is a really good YouTube series. Oh, I didn't realize it was YouTube. That's cool. That's really cool, actually. Why does this boat remind me of... Reminds me of Mickey Mouse. All right, we're going into the DLC, finally. Came from the channel Crinkles, and the playlist is just called Madness Combat. Oh, it's not, um... There were games. There were games based on that. Uh, the little grey people, right? I think the first one of those was just, um... It was done to the beat of Chicken Dance or something like that? Is that right? Steamboat Mickey Mouse is so old to the point where it has no copyright anymore. Yeah, as of last year. At, literally as of last year. Little grey people? Yeah, yeah, yeah! I love that so much! Man, those games were awesome! They were some of the best 2D games. There are games of it? Yeah, there are heaps of them. There are about five of them. Um, they came along around about the same time as Thing Thing. Which, <laughs> for millennials, that's gonna just, you know, ding ding! Endorphins! Thing Thing! That was so fun! But yeah, they were, they were kind of like Flash games. You have to see the series? I've definitely seen the series. Alright, little child right here. Um, I'm not interested in the small child anymore, given that agriculture is just a damp fart that we can't do anything with anymore. Hello, sir. For some guild tokens. Jesus, man. You want a 45 kilo ring? What is this guy? Um, chameleon here? He wore a lot of bling, didn't he? Madness Combat is probably my favorite bloody video series. You should check out Think Thing. Think Thing has some really, 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 really cool stuff. It's basically the same thing. It's it, essentially the same kind of universe. But the games and the videos have a lot more of a story behind them. Kind of like genetic engineering kind of kind of stories. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very innovative, honestly. It's ve it, you mentioned early animation style. It's just Flash. It's just Flash animators. They tend to be very innovative people. It's not too wild and the art is really good. It feels like scrap, scrap sketch drawing beating the crap out of everybody. Yeah, it definitely is. It's definitely that. So, we need to find out which of these uh, areas is ours, right? There's a bunch of little mining areas, and I'm not entirely sure. This looks like one. Dawn Rest! Okay, do we have to buy this? Looks like there's a shovel, there is a couple of buckets here. Perfect. And a map as well. Right, so, I think this is kind of supposed to be our starting area. We've got lava, we've got ice. Can we shovel the ice? Apparently we can. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but... You know, is what it is, I suppose. So, here's my thought, right? We probably have to shovel the ice into a bucket with lava. That's it, right? I love how the little guide for the head that just stays there. It's literally crappy and I'm here for it. What is this? Little guide for the head that just stays there. Sorry? It's like, oh, it's like watching a little scare. I thought you were talking about the game for a second there. You had me confused. Okay, so there's a little bit of ice in this bucket. It's not going to melt, obviously. We need to get ourselves... I've got a snowball. I've got a snowball. I've got a snowball! Sir! 
Excuse me, sir! The cross on the head? For the Madness Combat characters? Yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously, you should check out Think Thing. You're gonna love it. <laughs> no! Haha, <laughs> missed! Idiot! I got an achievement for that. <laughs> for throwing a snowball at her face. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it! Okay. So, I don't really know anything about this bit right here. What the hell is this? Handheld lighting device. Ah, okay. So, here's the thing. I don't know anything about this DLC. I did try and look it up yesterday evening. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of an issue when I did... Okay, good. Because there is no documentation for this game anywhere, which is not good. Okay, good. What if we just drop this in here? Okay, and then we take some ice and just... And then we got resources. Okay, perfect. So if we just leave this, say, here, that's always going to be filling up. So we just have to repeatedly shovel snow, right? This is how we get resources. Whoops. That's weird. A giant pile of snow in the lava. Okay, good. And whoops. And one there. And one there. And one there. Good. One there. I think I just got a couple of gems or a couple of crappy crystals. All right, good. All right, I'm starting to see the workflow. There, uh, again, there's no documentation about the DLC anywhere on the internet, aside from a single Steam guide, which doesn't even have half of the mechanics of the DLC listed in it. Just, I gotta admit though, this is significantly easier than using the brush pan. Like to actually just shove something into the bucket and then it, it processes, that is fantastic. Okay, good. I love it. I love it so much. <sighs> Since the characters aren't really supposed to have a face, makes you so you can actually see what the face is pointing at. I got a question. What's your opinion on people flexing their height? Uh, unnecessary. It's, com it's completely unnecessary and it kind of gives insecure vibes a little bit. I got it. Like, this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I don't, I don't really necessarily like when people flex their height because it's... Why? Like, it, it, what have you got to gain by just, like, Making somebody else feel worse for one thing that you were born with. There's no need for it, honestly. Can't say I'm... Um, I can say I'm saying inside is Vegeta, but I don't really know if that's a flex. It's Vegeta! Really? It's unnecessary, but sometimes it's funny. Yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I prefer uh, an elevated form of comedy where, you know, there's jokes and stuff, uh, rather than where people are just kind of like... Oh, I've got this more than you. And then they retort with, yeah, but I've got this more than you. Like those roasts and stuff like that. Those roasts on Comedy Central never really clicked with me. Like, it's it's okay to be confident in yourself, but on, on the other hand, if it's completely unnecessary and it makes someone feel worse, I probably wouldn't just, you know, say to do it. Yeah, let's put that out there. What do we got? We got some core stone in there. Nice. Hey, we got a bunch of core stone. And we also got some emeralds. Now, there are some new ores and gems in this DLC as well, so we're going to have to think about our sorting system a lot better than we have been. How's the weather up there? I've been told that a bunch of different times, and I am bang on six foot. Like, I, I am the definition of average. I thought. I thought. Recently, I, I mentioned this to somebody, and they uh, pointed out that the measurements were off, so uh, maybe I did something wrong. But I haven't measured myself since I was in high school. That could be it. Uh, where do we sell this crap? Let's actually check the map. I remember there being a city along this road a little bit further. All right, what are we looking at? Dawn's Rest. Okay. There's a bunch of quests over at the Lumberton Harbour. There's one at the Shattered Outpost. There's one in Burnville. And there's a bunch in New Glade. All right. Let's follow this road. I'm pretty sure New Glade is this way. And if we sell all of our crap, we might be able to get some money. This looks funny when the comparison between people's heights is insanely different. Yeah. I get uh, asked a lot at the supermarket, actually, to help people out. Just because I, I can reach the top shelf and a lot of people can't. Again, I'm not that tall. That's the thing. I'm, I'm feel, I would consider myself to be short, but I'm above, I'm above the average of my country. But in saying that, there are a lot of people who are way, way taller than me. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, you don't notice people who are, like, around the six-foot mark, but you definitely notice people who are closer to seven-foot. There are a lot of people very close to seven-foot here in New Zealand. In fact, I've got uh, a few friends who are pretty close to seven-foot as well. 
Spooky. Where do we drop this off? Where Probably right there, actually. What about here? Do we sell this here? What are you selling, sir? Really? You don't say. Ticket office. What the hell? They're only 50 bucks. Jeweler construction. What? They used to construct stores. These are cheap as chips. Tier three. That's not cheap. Ooh. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll look at the other things. All right, we've got a couple of drills here. Looks like we'll have to pipe them in with lava. Maybe the grinder is kind of like... All right, so... It seems like the lava needs to pump into these machines while they're sitting on top of the... Uh, ice, right? That's how it goes? Oh, task board. Perfect as well. That's great. What else have we got? Nothing else. I don't really see where we can earn any money in here. Unless we buy like a... Uh, a store? We got 12 50 bucks right here. We could probably actually just buy a couple of these stores. Let's just do that. Boop. Okay. I'm going to buy this tier one construction crate. What does it do? Drop in an empty construction area to begin with. Okay. Uh, let's try this jeweler one. Buy that 210. That's not what the price tag said, you ass. It said 50 bucks. 260. Right. Okay. Maybe I miscounted. Hello there, wa that watermelon kid. Are you doing okay today? I'm doing great. I remember one time in my church around the kids class area, there was one supervisor who was built like Hulk, insanely tall like a giant. He acted all mysterious. The height really gives you the aura sometimes. Oh, I'm more of a, um, I'm more of a yeah, kind of like action speak louder than words kind of guy. I don't, I don't assume th things about people. Maybe that's why height never really kind of like clicked with me. All right, how much is this? This is ticket office. I think that's going to be like a, oh, actually we've got a map in the back with an island on it, don't we? Yeah, Moats Island. So that's probably something we have to use the ticket office for. We probably have to build it at the Baron's Harbor to go to Moats Island. Although it does kind of look like there's greenery around there. So it might be a really, really good idea anyway. I'm doing very good. Awesome! I like to hear that. Uh, we've got an ice... What the hell? Melts ice to produce water. Essential for powering conveyor belt systems. Oh! Water output is also disabled when a logic value of zero is passed on. What? Is this a logic item? No. Thank the Lord. <laughs> that would suck so bad. Hardstone. Where the hell are we? Oh, we're down. We're down a little bit south. We've got some lava pipes here. So we could probably actually set up some lava. to just go straight into a bucket. And then we just shovel into it really, really fast, right? What else have we got? Got a lantern, probably not going to use that necessarily. A lot of lava pipes. Love fresh oh my god! Hey, the, la the watermelon kid, welcome to the BFD division. Enjoy your BFD. What have we got? Hand sorter, that's useless. Logic gem compressor might be useful later, but not so much now. Sorry, I just, I'm, I maybe crapped myself a little bit. You're very underrated, W YouTuber. Thank you so much, watermelon kid. The trick is to read chat. And also pay for the things before you walk out of a store with them, because otherwise you'll get an embarrassing situation where you walk out of a store and you haven't paid for anything, so it despawns from the world. And then no one can have it. Okay, I'm going to jump over here. Let's go ahead and drop that straight into the bucket. Then we want an outtake pipe. Intake pipe, sorry. Probably want a couple of these straight lava pipes. These look sick. I love this. 80 bucks already? Ho ho ho, that's cheap. Look how cheap this is. Nice. Okay, got a few of these so far. Now, I don't know if we have to craft any of these machines, but I imagine if we pick one up... Ah, okay, so the first two we can got to, like, set up. That's going to be absolutely fine. 430 bucks. We could probably actually buy that now, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can. So, right. Let's get some of these harvesters all set up. I'm pretty sure we've got enough money for these two. We need to pipe lava into them to get them to perpetuate... And then we can have them just dump everything from the excess out into the grinder. Also, I'm really glad these pipe in from behind. Uh, so now we can kind of like curl a bunch of these around one grinder before we even get a single conveyor belt. It's going to be good. I got to go. I'll try and watch your next stream though. Okay, Watermelon Kid, you have a great day. What happened to a short stream? Well, uh, it, mm, yeah, I do have to go. I do have to go. Um, I wanted to check out the DLC and see what we're working with, but it seems like it's actually not much more complicated than I uh, thought. Why does he have a star on his name? Uh, he bought a membership on my channel. Good man. Good man. So I'm going to buy all of this. How much have we got? 990? 
How much have we got now? 844, is that enough? Let's see, 750, yes it is, beautiful. What I'm gonna do is I am going to buy these two machines right here, and then we are going to load up the ute. Hold up, so this lines in from the back, which is perfect, because so does this one actually. Okay, so we need a few elbows, I think, and then we can kind of like cheese the elbows into these machines. Yeah, I'm gonna load them up and then I'm gonna head off. Can the DLC merge with the main game? Unfortunately not, which on the one hand, I am a little upset by because it would be really easy to get agriculture coins on this side of the game, I imagine. But at the same time, I do like the separation of the like lava pipes and the ice pipes and stuff like that. That is really, really cool. Completely separate. Right, why does the YouTube elbow cough emoji look like a dab? It does look like a dab, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, that's that's clever. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations, spray paint. You've you've made me laugh. Not many people can do that. Usually I'm dry as hell. I'm dry as cat food, but you know, you, you ended up doing it. Okay, we got enough pipes. We probably need to get a couple of elbows. We'll do that if we can afford them, and we'll get as many as we possibly can. Probably also need to get a T-junction, because I don't think I got a single T-junction. We're going to need a T-junction regardless of how much money we have. We've got a lot of resources down in that bucket. Okay, how much is this going to cost us? One single T-junction, and also as many elbows as we can get. 53. How much have we got? Ah, 94! So, let's go ahead, drop that in there. Oh, slam dunk too. Uh, let's get an elbow pipe right here. Drop that there. Can we get another one? No. This is all we can get. I'm pretty sure we can set up machinery with this, honestly. This is probably the bare minimum. It's like it's just going to reach. Uh, but it's enough. It's going to be enough. Hey, dabs. I remember when I was younger, I abused the hell out of dabbing. Ooh, that's cringe. <laughs> I actually made him laugh? Yes! I thought the YouTube community adopted the emoji to be the dab. It's called elbow cough. Literally. Does anybody even, like, cough into their hands or elbows anymore? Because there used to be literally TV ads. On, on TVs that just said, hey, cough into your elbow. Don't be a piece of garbage. Don't get people sick. And now I, I see that there's like a meme ar going around where uh, iPad babies are learning to just like <coughs> cough right onto the iPad and stuff like that. Very unhygienic. Actually, before we um, kind of like call the stream, let's try and find the market here because we do have a gigantic bucket of wealth to sell. And if we can buy more pipes, that'd be fantastic. Where is the bucket? There it is. Good. We're going to go on a little bit of a walk. I'm going to walk around the town a little bit. See what's going on. Dabbing back then was okay. <laughs> it's super cringe now. Oh, yeah. Dabbing back then was kind of sick. It was it was pretty sick when that footballer was doing it, right? What's this guy want? <laughs> he wants the earth moved. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, also don't know what that giant shard in the middle is for. I think it's like a, a gigantic barrier around here, right? That keeps the place warm. It's a glorified heater. Nothing down here. I'm not seeing any markets, by the way. I'm really struggling to find anywhere where we can kind of like sell our ores. Hmm. Wookie. We'll Jesus, on the iPad? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right on the iPad. Just like not into the hand, not into the elbow, just straight onto the device that they're using. I don't want to say it's like a Gen Alpha thing, but that's kind of how the internet is framing it. Because I know Gen Alpha, they've got their own kind of like... They're, they're going to be doing their own thing. Oh! Oh, this is a construction site, isn't it? All right, so we could actually set up a shop... Or not? Don't be faffing now. Huh? These Can we put this here? For gems? Okay, we don't have any cut gems. What about this one? Jewelry? No. Ingots? We don't have any of that. <laughs> that's a little bit of a shame. Okay, I think that that might actually be one of the construction zones that the game was talking about. So let's go ahead and just drop this onto the back of the ute right here. And we'll try and find one of these crates. Yeah, tier one straw. Straw. Ah, it is. Okay. Cool. Let's put this over here. Tier one straw. I don't know what this is going to give us. Uh. Oh, cool. Oh, but we have to build it. Right. I... Still actually very cool. I, I do really like this DLC. It's definitely shaken everything up in all of the right ways. Do you know that because you have kids or something? No, I I, I just use the internet. I have raised a couple of kids. I've, I've raised a couple. Not like full time, but you know, it's kind of like... Uh, it, the consequence of... Um, I've grown up where I grew up. We kind of like helped each other out, me and my sisters. 
I, I will never forget what they were like when they were kids. Really young kids. I remember when my cousins came over when I was like seven or something. They kept wanting to watch stupid stuff on the internet while I just wanted to actually play. <laughs> it's quite funny. I grew up in a very rural area. And finally, I am now living with someone else who grew up in a rural area. And we were just kind of like back and forthing. All of the things that we did when we were growing up would, you know, you'd go out and you'd get into a paddock or something and then you'd start like swinging a stick at moths, pretending that you're a Jedi or something like that. While in town, everyone was playing RuneScape back in 2001. That's, <laughs> that was my childhood. I was, I was swinging sticks at moths and now I, I do martial arts for fun. So nothing's really changed, really. The brain rotter's been here for years and I hate it. Not even paying attention, just locked at their screens. I remember getting so mad at it like that. Stick fighting is epic. I love stick fighting. It is really fun, isn't it? And you get really, really used to getting clocked right here as well. Which gives, it, it drains across the whole face, gives you a huge black eye. But it's not so bad after the first few times you've done it. All right. I'm going to save and return to the menu. But before I go, I do have a gift. I have a gift for you. I'm going to show you guys... Why dabbing is cringe now? Because I have direct evidence of why. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm going to show you guys a meme. Here we go. Here we go. This is why. <laughs> Could you imagine? That's your funeral. It did not age well. That was so fun, throwing and fighting with them. It was, wasn't it? It was really fun. I used to beat the crap out of bees. Nice. Hopefully not like uh, too many of them. I'm, I'm, I'm pro B. I'm a pro B guy. Oh, no. Yeah, I know, right? This is, <laughs> this is why it's not very good anymore. <laughs> when was this? Uh, this was 2018. So it's like. It wasn't just, it, it, it was right at the end of the popularity of the dab. And I saw this and this is what immediately ruined it for me. Cause I was like, I was like one of those, you know, just throw out a boom. Just why not throw one out? Because it was fun to do kind of like floss. But yeah, this uh, really unfortunate child died in his sleep and um, he was a dab Lord. So they, they did a mass dab for him. W on the kid. It is like a salute, isn't it? It's kind of like a, it's a cringe salute. With the two liter bottles, assault bees. <laughs> I mean, it was the kid's way of saluting, but it's kind of cringe. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They come out of the ground. You sure there wasn't like wasps or hornets or something like that? Or ants? At least they respected him. Yeah, I mean, like, there is good to the story. It's just the, um, it's, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, as they say, right? Oh, they would come out of the asphalt. Jesus. Wow, that's rough. Okay, so I am out of time. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and uh, fulfill my obligations to this music project that I'm doing with Epic Flying Horse. Maybe there's going to be a video coming out of it. Maybe not. Who knows? Maybe you guys will finally be able to see me sing. Seriously, that's not, you know, a, a complete and utter joke. All right, let's get that off then. So... Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Right up here, you can find the playlist for Hydroneer that I have made. And right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down the description of this video, you're going to find a link to my Discord where you can hang out with me and my community personally. And until I make the next video, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.